right, hello everybody and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. My name is Brian, I'm here with Allison and this is our fundraising stream. Um, Sans Beat Saber, or probably Sans Beat Saber, I don't know. So, we'll um, yeah, we'll see. There's don't give a, up there's yet. There seems to be a problem with the, um, what is we it, have, Oculus? The okay, Oculus? So we're trying to figure it, we're, we're narrowing it down to a problem with the headset or a problem with the video um, the um, video card. So if it's a problem with the video card, we're hooped. But if, it, if it's fixed by a switch out of the headset, um, we might be able to continue. So it, we're, just, we're just, and it was all working yesterday. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, in, the technical difficulties god that plagues us like a god of mischief has struck again. And uh, Jonathan, that's my husband, is busy in the background trying to fix all of this. But so far, it's not, you know, it's, it, we'll see. We'll see if we're able to. So we might um, have to forgo taking songs today. Uh, we'll, we'll give you guys a heads up. But any songs that have been put through before we this happened, we will get to them next week. So you, even if you put something through now, we will be we'll make sure to get to it next week if all of this is resolved uh but we do have another thing on the docket which is a response request from the great indoors who is giving us yet another response request in in uh as a uh, thank you for his support of our fundraiser which if you want to join him in supporting the fundraiser you can do so at feedthebadger.com support and if you want to send us a message at any time throughout the show that the best way to do so is at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. You get the full benefit of avoiding YouTube's algorithm, uh, comment enhancement algorithm, and, uh, you know, Twitter's complete lack of any way to send us messages except through the extremely obscure chat function that we have not figured out. And uh, we get the full benefit of whatever funds you want to tip us. So it's a win, win, win at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. All right. Let mm -hmm. us, uh, do you want to begin or shall we uh, explain? I guess, what we're doing? all right, I could explain what we're doing. So we are responding to two videos, but like they're specifically time stamped by a gentleman named Jordan Owen. Now, some of the you guys, yeah, the they are, are they are, the video, the videos were made by Jordan Owen. They were sent to us by Great Indoors. Um, and Jordan Owen made two videos. One of them is called, let me see if I got this title right, Autism, Misogyny, and Goldfish Panties. And the other one is called Let's Not Do Gamergate 2, R.E. Sweet Baby Inc. And, um, I, okay, so a little bit of backstory. I, I, I'm aware of Jordan Owen because back in 2014, 2013, 2014, when I was starting to get involved with this whole uh, men's issues thing and like the truth about feminism and stuff like that, I was watching a lot of different kinds of content. I was watching MGTOW guys. And at the time, I didn't really know like much about what it was, right? So I was watching Barbarossa. I was watching Stardust. I was watching Karen. I was watching Allison, Honey Badger Radio, Janice, um, you know freaking woolly bumblebee like just lots of different people uh talking about this kind of stuff and jordan owen was one of those people he was um i don't really know like you know if he goes back to like the the days of lay lay online atheist movement or whatever but i know that he was making content on youtube there was another guy who was his friend named davis arini uh who knows all the keyboard shortcuts and and um, when Gamergate happened, uh, Jordan Owen was a, a vocal part of that. I mean, not quite much like to the level of, say, you know, Carl, um, but he was definitely making videos about that stuff. And at one point, I remember uh, Jordan Owen and Davis Arini came together and they had uh, the intention of making some kind of a film documentary about either Anita Sarkeesian or... Gamergate or something. I think it was about Anita Sarkeesian. And um, because, right? or Zoe Quinn, it might have been that. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. I remember yeah. they were, 
they were pushing for this thing. I think they got it funded and it never happened for whatever reason. I think they had a falling out, whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's he... what it was. It was deep drama. But um, th that's where the uh, the lore of the, the keyboard shortcuts that comes in. Yeah. Uh, apparently the, the documentary never got made because he didn't know the keyboard shortcuts. Wasn't that, yeah. wasn't that the way it worked? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know what it was. I, I honestly like, no, no, you know, but that's, that, that was the excuse that was given. The meme, the, the meme is, yeah, that's one of the excuses. I think it has something to do with their production kind of like, like I said, their production kind of fell apart. I don't know the story. I don't care. It, it's, you know, like I get it. You, you try to organize things with people. Sometimes it doesn't work out. It's, it really is neither here nor there in my opinion. But then Jordan Owen disappeared for a while, and then we got this request, and I gotta tell you, I watched his Let's Not Do Gamergate 2 thing, and I was kind of fuming, not gonna lie, so, <laughs> just, but we will see what, I mean, I'm not Spoilers. super surprised by this, but, yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Let's not do Gamergate 2 because Trump. Yeah, because TDS. At least in part. It turns out that's most of it Trump for him. Arrangement syndrome. TDS yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like serious, a serious case. Um, but anyway. All right. So well, what are we okay. starting with? We're starting with the panties, fish yeah, panties, we're goldfish with panties. panties. Like that's that's goldfish panties. You know, you got to start with that. So, I, I don't know what this is about, but these time codes were picked for us by. Um, great indoors. I did not watch I, I, I this video. It. I watched the other video. I didn't watch this one, so I don't know what's in it. But but it's other but, than but what? essentially panties is the what's covering you know the 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 container for this is for the other one, which is let's not do Gamergate again. Um, I uh, so it gives it some context, shall we say? Sure. Some structure. So mm -hmm. it's just less panties and more Sphinx, I guess. But we can we can begin um, at uh, twenty seven minutes in. This is yeah. I'm already at twenty seven minutes in. Hence the um, face palm. Or should we? So we'll play it. Maybe we should. Uh, oh, I should share my video with you. You want to do the things? Wait. Well, before we do that. Well, I already did the things, Brian. Do you want me to do the things? Again? Oh, what? Do you, okay, no, no, no. I just wanted to know. Okay, no, I've done. I've done them. You must have. Uh, All right. Been doing something I'm gonna else, screen. Like, no, I, I, I maybe. I'm gonna screen share. <laughs> so there it is. So you should join that so you can watch it. Um. Okay. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we should read the the synopsis. So I can. Read you want me to synopsis. read the synopsis? Yeah, you do it. I can read it. I can read it. I'm I'm fine with that. Okay. I I. But uh, you know, I mean, maybe we could read. We could exchange. Like, do like a. What are those things? Um. Baton race and I'll, I'll you know, do relay race. Like yeah, relay. You mean race. like grammar school when you would yeah. have like a kid read a paragraph and then another kid would read the next paragraph. Okay. All right. This is synopsis of autism, misogyny, and goldfish panties by Jordan Owen. All right. Uh, Owen and this, the, actually, the synopsis the 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 video is by Jordan Owen. The synopsis is by Great Indoors. Owen Jordan. Is it jo Jordan Owen? Or no, it's Jordan? Jordan Owen. It's Jordan Owen. Okay, so this is sort of like the Japanese way of saying his name. O Owen <laughs> Jordan starts off his video stating what he was recently accused of something. They that he was recently accused of something. Woo, that's a nice storytelling hook. Yeah, he's yeah. he's he's being thrust into uh, questioning some fundamental aspect of his identity. Let let's find out how he does. Our little um main character. But as the accusation was unfounded, it didn't develop into anything substantial. Okay, well, now the narrative, now the narrative, um, now the narrative flow is, is gone. Like the narrative um, thrust is gone. And he refers to a previous video on the subject because he follows this up by delving into what being accused of misogyny looks like through the lens of autism. <laughs> oh, good grief. Do yeah. you need a moment to recover from that sentence, or shall I? No, um, just continue. We'll just power through it. it. I'm sorry. Likely. I don't know what it's like to experience things through the lens of autism, but an autist probably doesn't know what it's like to experience it through the lens of not autism. So this is kind of a pointless exercise. 
It is likely that the accusations at his address were also about him being a misogynist. Okay, this is um, great indoors. What Jordan states that he doesn't intend to use his autism to deflect. He's totally intending to do that, though. And that he knows what actual misogyny is when he is confronted with it. Oh, really? Yeah, well, actually, it's like it's like mathematics, right? Other yeah, men do. It's, it's very usually, objective. Yeah, it, it usually means it's what those other men he doesn't agree with do. Let's be mm -hmm. honest, that's how it's really used. The example he then gives is a fictional one that that of the character of Frank Booth in the David Lynch movie Blue Velvet. Apparently, Frank's assaults towards male characters, namely protagonist Jeffrey Beaumont, don't count towards anything. That's an aside, by the way. Personally, I would describe him that I would be, uh, I believe, great indoors. Frank mm -hmm. Booth as a sociopath. Okay, so this was this was a with this was a narrative aside about the the summary makers. Particular I've never seen Blue Velvet. Uh, I can't stand David Neither Lynch I. sometimes because yeah, I don't know he, what the hell is going on great. in his movies. He grates sometimes. Mm -hmm. Jordan then continues to say that there is, however, this meta understanding of misogyny. That so many other people have that doesn't make sense to him. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, it, editor's note: throughout the video, he tends to refer to this autism, his autism, as the reason why this meta understanding is so bizarre to him. So he is using his autism to explain why he is not a misogynist. misogynist. Yeah. But can be accused of one. Yeah. He just doesn't understand, right? And honestly, like. I'm on his side when he's accused of mon at least I'm on the side of let's let's actually hear the allegation and see if there's any actual proof. Oh, that but, sounds more autistic than this. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh, I I'm wounded. Okay, Jordan follows this up with an additional personal anecdote of an accusation of misogyny. This happened more than a decade ago. I I'll just continue. Oh, okay. good lord. Paragraph breaks. He was involved in some sort of musical project with a group of guys, one of whom happened to be friends with a lesbian couple, and they decided to go with him, with them. They went to some go-go bar where they had these uplifted platforms for the girls who are dancing, and they chose to get seats near one of those platforms. While chatting with Jordan, one of the lesbian women decides to get up on the nearest platform and starts to dance. She then directly asks Jordan what he thought about her outfit. She was wearing a small black dress with straps on both sides. Their side profile would give the appearance of an almost naked profile. Coupled with running shoes, and because she was gyrating right in front of him, with him having to look up, a pair of goldfish panties which were bunched up so that, according to Jordan, almost looked like diapers. So Jordan responded with, Well, I like the dress, but I don't understand the goldfish panties. Her reply, Oh, I think they just look nice. And that was that. On a second night out with a slightly different group of people, but with the same lesbian couple, Jordan started chatting up to a third woman who happened to be straight. This woman had very pronounced, barely covered up breasts. And while she put, put her arms underneath her breasts, making them even more pronounced, she says to Jordan, My friends say I should have a breast reduction because they're just uh, a triple D. So large. large. So, oh, so large. Yeah, I think that's how it's written. Okay, be. so. Okay, I don't know why, why there's like a weird carrots over the O's, falls. but yeah. Yeah, like what, what the hell's with the. Okay. Jordan replies with, you cannot do that. Those are fantastic. So fucking autistic. I'm sorry. One of the lesbian women, not the goldfish panties one, who weren't part of the discussion at all. Do I, is it awful that I'd, I'd, I would have the urge to say, no, I think, yeah, they, could, they could be bigger. You don't want to be seen as flat chested. Who we weren't part of the discussion at all said, suddenly butts in and exclaims, you cannot tell her what to do with her body. And that was the last time Jordan and his buddies hang, hung out with the lesbian couple. Okay, where does the allegation of misogyny come in? Well, I guess, do you want me to read? Yeah, yeah. You uh, I'll, I'll read from here. Okay, oh. later on, the music buddy who was befriended with the lesbian couple informed Jordan that he was advised to quit the project because the couple thought Jordan was a creep. There, there it is right there. So he commented, a straight woman took offense. Supposedly a lesbian oh, woman did not. It was a lesbian. Oh, well, behalf. whatever. A lesbian on behalf of the straight woman, yeah. 
Both aforementioned incidents were brought up by his friend as to the reason why. After giving this exposition, Jordan states that he finds it impossible to speak about matters of sexuality with women who exhibit any degree of interest and not be accused of misogyny. Furthermore, he states that as soon as something related to women enter a discussion, it's inevitable that whoever invoked the element into the discussion will be accused of misogyny. He adds that the only times in his past where he felt misogynistic were when it was the result of his frustrations facing down accusations of misogyny that made sense to him. Ex uh, editor's note, in, on in contrast to accusations that did make sense to him, also this seems to happen to him a lot. Yeah, because he's hanging around with crazy people. He points yeah. out the irony in becoming misogynistic due to false accusations of misogyny. Editor, no, no. one could also be call that detesting liars and manipulators, male or female. Here I want to bring attention to the fact that the accusation that Jordan mentioned at the start of this video was done by another man, not by a woman. Okay, so this is, this is, oh god, there's a lot of accusations flying around here. Um, but that is a really good point. Like, he's, he's hanging around with apparently very sensitive women. Well, no, I mean, maybe, but I don't think that they're losing sleep over this. But the truth is, is that if you, you can use the threat of being called a misogynist to exert tremendous control over men. So, or women, but mostly men. It's just like the power of the pick me allegation. Maybe they don't, because like, I don't think that women are all that terribly impacted by like men, you know, I don't know, just being around them. Because I mean, like, what is misogyny at this point? It doesn't mean anything. And frankly, I think there's a strong case to be made that there's no such thing. But now that we are sort of like living with this, this, shadow of the potential to be called a misogynist over all the heads of men there is literally like nothing you can do to explain away why you're not a misogynist which makes the entire exercise pointless so you might as well just like ignore it but he can't do that because he wants to be friends with people who like the idea probably take some pleasure in the idea of holding it over his head like oh what are you gonna say you know, it's kind of like over men's head, yeah. Yeah, over the heads of men, essentially tempting them to have an opinion or assert themselves or assert yeah, well, a boundary like or express themselves like honestly without being called a misogynist. So like maybe well, I don't I don't know. I know that we haven't gone into the video yet, but Yeah, well I think that I think it starts with like discussion. essentially yeah, I think it starts with guys just like don't don't let them do that to you because it is mm. It is essentially a miniature struggle session, and it's it's not it's not good for your mental health. <laughs> so, in my opinion, yeah. Anyway, it isn't. But um, yeah, just just I honestly, probably want to just leave these people alone and not not hang out. Yeah, why would you want to be around people that are like because will do you that know why? to you? You know, because when you're not in the crosshairs. You feel like you're the one good man, I'm guessing. Right? Yeah, it's, it, it is better to be more? at the right hand of the devil than to be in his path. So, yeah. well, but not, not just that you, you feel <laughs> superior to the men who are currently in the crosshairs being accused of being a misogynist. Mm -hmm. You feel morally superior to them. I mean, it's something that I noticed with these uh, uh, blood sports. Like, the, the thing is that. The individuals who engaged in the blood sports, they would be crucifying people who were essentially identical to members of their audience. But their audience was very, like, they loved it, even though they were watching themselves. They were essentially watching themselves, and it was just a matter of happenstance that it just happened to be this other dude who got it. It was almost like they, um, they loved the, the watching someone who was like them be destroyed. And I guess it was yeah. because they felt a certain amount of power over their own uh like exclusion. It was it was it was really interesting. And I think that that men who who exist in these these highly sort of toxic, abusive eggshell environments, they might get something out of feeling like they are not like those other guys. 
as yeah, as they're, it is because, you know. It's it's like it's like they're it's literally like playing a difficult video game. Like they're like, Oh, can I pass the level today? Yeah. <laughs> and so they do and they're like, Oh man, you know, like I, I think that there is like they almost see it as a challenge sometimes, but I don't know. It's it's like these people are not I don't think that they're your friends, man. Um, okay. No, by definition they're not your friends, right? No, no. Okay. All right. So where where did I leave off? Um he comes uh yeah, he comes up with a second example of what he thinks actual misogyny looks like. A man hitting a woman for the audacity of talking to another guy. Something he said happened to him between junior high and high school That's where he was the other guy. Yeah, That's these men. Oh, oh. Although that guy over there who got in the way, mm -hmm. yeah, that's not mis that's just abuse. I mean, is it misandry when a woman hits a man for talking to a, a, a another woman? No, it's just no. abuse. It's jealous abuse. Yeah, it's it, 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 a it subtle like humble brag to all of this too. Like these there is right, there is no for sure, for sure. There is like a weird. That's another thing too. Is that like I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand autism, so I'm not going to pretend. And I do think yeah. the word is overused, but I would wonder: Would does an autist take pleasure in having the moral high ground? That doesn't sound autistic to me. <laughs> so, but maybe I don't know what I'm autistic. talking about. Again, I I humble myself before anyone who understands that more than me, which is probably most of you guys. But what I'm saying is, is that I don't see this as a useful out. But um. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, you know, I'm, it's like you, it's like, it's like cursing in church out loud and then saying, well, look, I have Tourette's and then you can just, <laughs> people are supposed to be like, oh, well, that's okay. Then go ahead. You know? Um, but anyway, uh, think, let me um, see. Yeah. That, yeah. I think autistic people might, might have a problem with the, the whole the moral gerrymandering. What I've noticed is that autistic people tend to compete more over being good at something or useful. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, not as so much on. Or, on I mean, do they even thing. compete? Like, is there, is there, do they benefit from like pride or vainglory? Do they even, I don't, I'm, like, I'm, I'm seriously qu asking this question because I don't know. Like, yeah, is I there. Do. It's just, th there's a, I think there's, um, like, for normal people, there's like this 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 environment that or this um this energy that you exist within you navigate through and it's like this kind of um slightly superficial flattering of people's egos if that makes sense so you 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 mm -hmm. you, you flatter someone briefly by taking an interest in whatever's happening in their day and that there's this kind of that there's politeness, you know. I'm not I'm not saying this to be like con condemning. I'm just saying this as some uh, you know, at, at my understanding of it. So you navigate the world by flattering people slightly with their egos, not not excessively, but just making people happy and and comfortable. Autists don't do that. They just everything is 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 logic, facts, uh, skills, and usefulness, and um. They or utility, really, at least. Or yeah. utility, yeah. It's all to do with that. It's all I mean, pragmatism and rationality, and yeah, yeah, and no, mm -hmm. and no, and very little consideration for that kind of emotional, that that kind of emotional equilibrium that I think normal people sort of take for granted until they meet an autist and and discover that they, they despise them. Um, but you know that you you're all sort of maintaining like this emotional equilibrium, this mild flattery. If you go up to someone, you want to deliver some bad news, then you engage in even more intense flattery, and then you just sort of slip that in. And mm -hmm. you know, for the autist, as soon as you come close to them with any kind like the, they probably know you're delivering bad news. So what it what it when when you do that whole fluffing and flattering for a normal people person, that just makes it easier. It's sort of like giving you a lollipop before you take your blood. For an autist, it's like, why are you manipulating me? Right. right. It, 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 they perceive it more as manipulation, um, because I don't think they value this this um, this like this this positive social vibe as much as people who aren't autistic. Yeah. Um. And and so that that, that, that there's that difference between how they navigate things socially. 
Um, probably these women were trying to get some kind of charming little interaction with him, like either the goldfish panties, and she's showing off her goldfish well, I, panties. She probably wanted yeah. like some kind of quip or like Les- maybe lesbians more. can be lesbians can be really weird about that. Like I've had you know lesbian friends and in Chicago, and um, all I'll say is that when they get good and drunk, they become pretty fucking straight. And I and I'm <laughs> I'm a little it's a bit weird to me. Um, but no, I have run across it many times. Anymore. No, I don't think it's that weird. But I'm saying, like, and I have, like, a very old friend who I've known for, a, like, for as long as I've known anyone. Like, I'm talking, like, you know, three years old, we probably have known each other. And his mother um, became a lesbian, like, when he was very young. And she would bring girlfriends around, and they would expose him to weird shit. I didn't learn this until pretty recently. Um, which, I mean, they sexualized him very early on, you know, like there were Playboy magazines lying around and it was just weird, man. And I, you know, again, not, I'm not try I'm not painting with a broad brush. I'm not saying this is how all lesbians are, but my experience with lesbians is they're very sexually liberated and they're, and they're shameless about it. I'll put it that way. And sometimes they are not lesbians for, you know, for a while. I don't know why, but that's just what I've run into. So uh, from what my experience, gay men seem to have their, you know, they're like pretty like, this is what I want. And that's no, it. You know, they're like, too. yeah, I'm sure it does. Okay. I, okay, I, I, I've I, known gay men who have sex with women, but it's mostly just, you know, entertainment, um, not like an actual <laughs> desire for a relationship. Right. It's very um, Dionysus. It's, yes, it is. It's, it's a but, hedonist um, bot. Yeah, it's hedonism <laughs> bot. Oh, I, I know, I know. I find hedonism bot charming. At least he enjoys himself, you know. That a lot it's of the, like the a lot of the hedonism does. I see, like these women who are hedonists, they look like they're fucking miserable. Have you noticed that? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's like you're, you're engaging in all kinds of decadence. It's, to the point it's of called. Fun. It's it's kind of it's all empty. That's why. But yeah, it's okay. Like, mm-hmm. Can't you at least enjoy the decadence you're engaging? You're not even happy about it. Like can you can you have the virtue? I, I I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's almost like there's a virtuous hedonism which is actually enjoying yourself, and then there's this fuck this hedonism where you are s- somehow self-flagellating. You know what I mean? You're mm. not even you're not even enjoying what you're doing. So why are you doing it? Because you're destroying right. yourself to stick it to the man. It's right. astounding. Um. Uh, okay. I got a I, I got a super chat I should read out really quick. Um, Anthony Durrell, thank you, gives us a five dollars Australian pesos and says autists are about as variable as anyone outside of impaired social development. You can possibly be both narcissistic and autistic. I think I'm going to call Australian dollars Australian diggery dues. That's going to be the that's going to be the uh, like the the currency the unit of currency I'm going to use. So thank you for the five diggery dues. <laughs> okay all right um should we read the rest of this because we're, we're not even in the video yet and it's been like a half hour so okay all right these we'll, men hopefully it'll go quickly yeah these men well kids should treat the women around them as their possession according to jordan and while he expresses the wish to pummel these guys to the ground he knows that those sentiments will also be labeled as misogyny as it insinuates that women cannot handle their own problems Although he doesn't use the term MGTOW, he does express the wish to remove himself from the rest of society because he is done with all these Kafka-esque social trappings. Uh, Jordan, if it was just like traffic laws and you have a booklet of rules, I would learn the rules and stick by it to the best of my abilities, but it's not. Yeah, it's that's right. It is a mess, Jordan. That's, that's kind of, in, in a way, cool. that's, that's... That's what one of the problems is like... Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, Brian. Um, mm. I was doing the autistic thing. I want to have the utility in this moment. Um, the the thing is that it's not about rules. It's about maintaining that kind of social ambiance. And that's what these women want. They want the men to be able to maintain the social ambiance. So to make some cute or nagging, like uh, teasing comment about her goldfish panties um to to make something teasing or cute about you know the size of her boobs i guess mm-hmm. um you know just to just to be able to maintain this kind of social ambiance really 
and he wasn't able to do it at least not to the lesbian's satisfaction or the lesbian was just jealous because the other woman got more positive sexual attention from him you know i mean yeah. that's that's the case but it was like um which is you know dangerous and uh <sighs> It's 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 it, a lot of times men get crushed by women's competition with each other, which I don't mm -hmm. know. It is really hard to navigate that, and there are no rules, and that's the point. Like, what the women are testing for is whether or not you can create that warm kind of you know what I'm talking like sociality, that warm kind of um fun but not too dangerous kind of energy. You know what I'm talking about, right, Brian? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like just a, it's like um, it's like a um, it's it's like a cocoon of uh, a, a something. It's 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 an energy, right? It's a positive energy, and they're trying to determine if you can do that. There's no rules mm -hmm. to it. There's no mm -hmm. real rules to it. He's right, and autistic men are going to be screwed by that unless they learn how to do that in a or they they train themselves how to do that how to manage that kind of stuff intuitively through repeated repetition like repeated exposure the expectation of making a comfortable environment for someone and that usually is like through uh, customer service or something a customer service job you know and you you learn how to do that and yeah. then they'll can apply that to this situation i'm guessing maybe jo jordan owen didn't hasn't had that level of exposure but anyway, but again, it has no rules, and it's not fair to ju condemn someone because they're incapable of making you feel good. That's where it really comes down to. A lot of these accusations of misogyny are women saying, well, this man is incapable of making me feel good. Right. Right? He doesn't know how to construct this, this flattering or even slightly teasing energy before he approaches me sexually, so he's a creep. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. well, no, he just doesn't know how to do that. But get get this. The people who know how to do that aren't necessarily good people. Narcissists know how to do that. Sociopaths know how to do that. They know how to manipulate people using their ego and construct these kind of charming, warm scenario where they get what they want. You don't want to be in relationships with men like that mm -hmm. or women like that. So it's not that an autists are necessarily worse, although honestly, it can get really grating when autistic you know, you're in a, you're in a relate you're in like a group with autistic, and everything is a competition over stuff, right? There's there's absolutely no acknowledgement of people's comfort. Everything becomes a competition. That gets exhausting. Uh, there's there's sometimes autistic people don't realize that uh, being with the group of people engaging socially isn't about you know winning it's about enjoying that warm companion companionable energy right so you know like it, i'm not trying to say one or the other is worse but in this case a lot of the time what i'm seeing is these accusations of misogyny come down to this guy wasn't able to make me feel good and excited at the same time. Like slightly on edge, like you don't know exactly what he's going to do, but you're there for it. But, mm -hmm. you know, also really comfortable, you know, that kind of a little bit dangerous, but also completely comfortable, but also a little spicy, but also mild and vanilla and also like warm, but cold, a little, a little crunchy, but smooth, you know, that kind of shit. Right. Like, yeah. And then if you don't do that, you're a misogynist. I mean, it's ridiculous. Anyway, and it gets worse because, of course, men are, or women are inculcated with this whole idea that men are a threat. Sorry for jumping all over you there, Brian. No, it's all right. I mean, let's, uh, let's read some more. Okay, so this is, hopefully I'll get to the end of this. Um, throughout the video, he continuously points to his autism as the reason why he has difficulty dealing with these vague accusations of misogyny, alluding that non-autists just simply go along with it and that these accusations are being pushed by neurotypicals. He ends the video trying to answer the hypothetical question as to why he doesn't consider himself to be a misogynist, a question he posed to himself earlier in the video and initially answered with, I have female friends. Again, as with Blue Velvet, he brings up a work of fiction. I have binge watched and enjoyed The Handmaid's Tale, and I cannot wait to see one of the male antagonists get his comeuppance 
If I was a misogynist, I would be taking his side. I'm an autist. I'm built around observing logical connections between concepts and finding that the most valid logical connections between two concepts formulate the basis for a train of thought that we call the truth and that observing the truth is a moral virtue and a good thing. Neurotypical people have this sense of things. There's this aura. It's like they sense the auras of the world interacting in some spectral infinitesimal way that make no sense to me. It's like a vibe that they get. So, and I don't understand vibes that people get. And then he goes into timestamps for let's not do Gamergate 2. So <sighs> All right. I don't know. I don't know what to add to that. I mean, I'm like I have a feeling that he might not be as autistic as he thinks. And I think the video uh Gamergate 2 kind of like his video on Gamergate 2 is from my from my side the the evidence for this unless is it possible that autists could be affected by the emotions of people around them so yeah. if he's friends with lesbians let's say he's friends with a bunch of angry lesbians and those angry lesbians are always going on and on about how awful men are and all this and they're like i don't know like really liberal um, could it be possible that an autist would just be like, my friends feel this way, and so I'm going to feel this way by, I don't know, like, by uh, osmosis. Does that make sense? I, like, I swear to God, guys, I'm not pretending to know about this, so yeah. please don't get angry with me. I'm, I'm legitimately trying to understand. I'm asking questions. I'm just asking questions. I gotcha. Um, you know what? Let's just watch the final bit, like the final time code. Uh, go to, let's see, 35, no, no, 3414, and we'll go to 3520. Oh, this, this video, this, this, Yeah, the okay. first video, the first video. 3414, you said? I think that's all we really need to look at. Let's just take a look at that. Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm going to play it. Neurotypicals of the world. I am an autist. I am built around, log I am built around observing logical connections between concepts and and uh, and and finding that the the uh, most valid logical connections between two concepts formulate the basis for a train of thought that we call the truth, and that the truth is a observing the truth is a moral virtue, and a good thing. That's how I'm structured. Neurotypical people have this sense of things. There's this 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 aura that, that it's like they. I'm I'm pausing partly for the banana, but also I'm just okay. It's true that the truth is a good thing because even if the truth is negative, it's better to know the truth because if you you can't make something better built on a lie, so that's true. But I don't think it's unique to autists. I think that regular people also care about the truth. <laughs> I think, you're, again, I have to wonder, are you just around a bunch of crazy lesbians? Because I can see how they would be, like, less interested in the truth and more interested in, like, avoiding the ick or whatever yeah. it is that they're into, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, um, also, I wanted to point out that I think, using my scenario where you have to deliver bad news... I think neurotypical people would probably go and they would, you know, warm people up to it with some flattery, some, you know, interest in the things that they're doing and then deliver the bad news. Whereas, again, autistics would look at that and say, you're manipulating me. But after the bad news is delivered, they might appreciate, you know, some help calming down or, or like just releasing the tension from that. So it's interesting because sure. I think that. Ultimately, it may come down to just a slight shift in, in, in approach um, for both camps to understand each other better. Because, you know, autistic people have emotions, emotions too. It's just they like to address the pragmat pragmatic facts of the situation first, get that yeah. out of the way, and then let's, let's just marinate in, 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 in like getting over or, or making ourselves more comfortable about what just happened, if that makes sense. If um, anything, I, he would he would be considered more toxically masculine than the average man if he was an autist. Because yeah, of that's, his that's one thing. 
I mean, yeah. that's how he would be framed. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's how it's, you know, like if you're like purely logical or at least like you like tend to be more logical than the average person or whatever, um, then that means you're going to be less, maybe you know, uh, like your emotions won't be as on the surface. I'm not saying they don't have emotions. I mean, there's, a, there's an autistic guy that goes to my church and I'm pretty sure he's an autistic guy. And, um, you know, he's he's. He's got it together. He just struggles with like, you know, background chatter. Like, you know, when when we were the service ended and everybody's trying to chattering and they're like bringing out snacks and stuff. And he was like, you could tell he was like uncomfortable. And I, I asked him, how are you doing? He was like, oh, it's just like, you know, everyone's talking out of sync at the same time. It's like this crowd chatter. And I was like, oh, yeah, I get it. You know, I mean, it doesn't bother me as much, but I, I understand why. But I mean, I know he. He feels feelings, but he would be considered toxically masculine by that by the feminist standard, not just the feminist standard, by the standards of fucking you know mental health, the 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 whole psychological field. So, yeah. Again, I'm sorry, that, Jordan, that, but you are you would be considered a misogynist. Yeah, well, toxically masculine, quote unquote. But it, yeah, essentially toxic. Yeah, but the real threat of toxic masculinity is that it ultimately is harmful to women. That's the reason why it's an issue. So, uh, I mean, by their yeah. logic. Yeah, Going to play then, more of the video? I mean, oh, sorry. Essentially, the, the, the phrase, the slur, toxic masculinity, just hits uh, neurodivergent people. Because they, they, like I said, they want to get the pragmatic out of the way first and then deal with the emotional, which mm -hmm. is perceived as toxically masculine by women, by women who are more feminine, I guess, who want the emotional first or the, the perception that this person can manage the emotional first and then everything else. Yeah. And that's really unfair if you think about it. It's interesting how basically the, the more feminine approach to socialization has been considered neurotypical and the more masculine approach to socialization is neuroatypical if you think about it mm -hmm. that's uh that that fascinates me because i think that men left to their own devices would tend towards um pragmatic communication m mostly uh, or almost yeah. exclusively yeah i think that they they already do for sure that i think by default processed. Mm -hmm. With emotions processed by developing skills or doing something physically. So what happens is that men learn to navigate the more um, like that, that, that warm energy field that women prefer to exist in. And they learn to, to manage it and produce it. Um, so, you know, they, they learn to be charming. They learn to engage in the flattery. They learn to uh, front load emotions. They learn how women do things which is then seen as the normal way of doing things. And I'm not, mm -hmm. not saying that men who navigate this aren't, are less masculine because that is in of itself learning a skill, right? Um, so that, yeah. is, that is a sort of a masculine quality. But I'm saying that they are achieving a standard that's set by women, that that's a socialization standard set by women because it's their natural way of socializing. It's like you go to the palace, you you act in a way appropriate to the culture of the royal family, right? And you learn how to mm -hmm. do that. That's what men are doing. But that is now seen as the normal, whereas men are the deviant. I'm just pointing that out. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we choose oh, to focus on or what is chosen to focus on. But let, let's let you want to listen to more of this or do you want me to go to the next video? Which is interesting because if you think about it, it actually maps to the whole concept of, of a man, right? A man yeah. isn't a man necessarily like a, an adult male. A man is someone who has attained the standards set forth usually by women. So yeah. and when they say, well, our society is focused on men that's only like one fourth of the story because it's not really focused on adult males and how they do things naturally. It's focused on men and how they serve society. Mm -hmm. you know, how, me how well men attain this, for example, how well men attain the emotional acuity to ma man manufacture this, this warm 
you know, social energy for women. But that, but the guy behind that who had to struggle to maintain it or or develop it, he's invisible. So you know, our society does not center adult human males. It only centers those people who are adult human males who have subsequently attained some benefit for the people around them. You know, yeah. for the people around them. Okay, all right, well, let's continue. All right. I sense the auras of the world interacting in some spectral, uh, spectral, infinitesimal way that makes no sense to me. It, it's bizarre. It's like... It, it sounds like you're just around women, honestly. <laughs> like, like, he's saying, like, oh, regular people, they they have, like, vibes, and they, like, feel, they have, they're all, like, intuitive and, and wooey and shit. No, I think, I yeah. think you're, you're hanging around with women. Like, if you hang around with men, you might be more, like, maybe you're a step beyond the average guy, but that just sounds like you're around female my brain people it's, it's like more. there's it, it, it's just a, a vibe that they get and i don't understand vibes that people get you don't understand women and, and so, join the club <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to drop this in the autism category for my videos because okay i'm just here's the thing the accusation of misogyny is 100 percent illegitimate generally of and course it is. is. Why. Yeah. Because it's completely divorced from any kind of action. You know, it is just you are giving me the wrong vibe. And also yeah. I want to control your speech. Right? Yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes certain speech is 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 inappropriate for certain areas. That doesn't make it misogynist inherently. It just needs to go where it's more appropriate. Now, I think that you can say that concepts are misogynist, maybe. Like if there was ever a group of people who attained great status in academia and were consultants to corporations and governments that alleged that women have constructed a society for their own benefit at the expense of men and that women oppress men and that women in authority is is automatically equals women men's oppression, you might point to that narrative and say, hey, that's misogynist. Or perhaps the narrative that women are inherently evil and cannot make positive choices. You can point to that and say, hey, that's a misogynist attitude. But I don't think that you can really, like, the, I don't think accusations of misogyny should result in censors, censorship or social ostracization or punishment what it should result in is more conversation about yes. what is being alleged okay and what is being said all right but anyway and we should keep punishment to verifiable actions not thought crimes because like mm -hmm. misogyny is never alleged it shouldn't be alleged about a violence i guess they say that there is misogynist violence but um it's actually pretty rare for uh, for men or women to to try to kill each other because they hate men or women. That's that's you know I mean I guess you could you could say that some forms of violence are misogynist, but the point is that it's violence. Like it's already amply covered by property and personal um, like uh, violations of the person laws. Why do you need to add on some additional thing about motive? As if it makes yep. it worse. Like it doesn't. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's go to the next movie or video. Yep, I'm all, I already have it up. So this one is called "Let's Not Do Gamergate 2. and um, I'm looking at the time codes. Uh, there's a bottom. There's some rambling at the beginning. I don't care about Horizon Zero Dawn. He praises. It's not really a good game, but you're entitled to your opinion. I just think it's shit. And. Um, then he talks about let's see uh i guess i'll jump to 851. so there's this thing that i've been seeing in certain parts of gamergate 2 and i think it's mostly coming from people like this that hate the way that gamergate won like where it led there are some people who deny that that happened that like gamergate one is like you know is sort of like the wellspring of all of the other 
not just like the stuff in the culture war, but like the general direction of like all other things that were happening in like our society, you know, political change and um, the riots of 2020 and all that. And I think that there is an argument to be made for that. But a lot of people, people who don't like the, you know, some things about the last uh, few years um they want to deny that but i don't think it's true i think that there was a i think gamergate 2 is actually a proof of what i'm saying is that there are there are people waking up because of what happened in gamergate 1 what we were made aware of and then um that message got out if you were willing to listen to it and you were humbling yourself enough to basically be like oh well, maybe i was wrong about a lot of shit and that's what I mean, that's what we hear in the, at least for me, you know, in the, in this sort of men's issue space. Like, if you had asked me about this in 2012, I would have, like, thought it was laughable. And now I'm here essentially, like, devoting my life to it. So, because I humbled myself and I was like, well, you know, I, what do I know? You know? But there are some people who can't do that. And they're, they're, they're just too invested or they're prideful or they're, um, you know, sunken cost fallacy whatever you want to call it and it, this makes yeah, it very just, difficult so hmm? yeah i mean or they've invested a huge component of their identity into it yeah that's what like, i'm saying they've invested their invest identity or effort or time or energy or there's invest like imagine this okay let me put it let me put it this let me, let me give another example of what i mean by investing because they're in 2019 a novel event happened involving a certain flu-like virus and there was a narrative around it most of us didn't know what was going on but we were just kind of like trying to keep up and there was a tremendous campaign of data some of it more reliable than others and people were attaching themselves to authority figures of some kind like oh i i need to believe these people because i am told and i have been told for basically my entire life that these people over here know what's up they are the authority on this topic they are the final arbiter of what is true because they're on tv and i never like i never question what i'm told by the tv and they went in all like all in and people that i know personally that I consider to be intelligent people, they completely fell for it. Now, for the beginning of it, most of us were at least like entertaining it because, hey, you know, we we would this is completely unexpected. And I'm choosing this because it's not political, or at least it shouldn't be. But the fact is, is that as time went on and there was more information coming to light, and then there was censorship. And there was all this like government overreach and all these other things that were happening. Then you got like a real split that happened where you had people that were like, this is wrong. This is not the way this should be done. I will not accept this. I will not be told how to live my life. I will not have my children separated from their classmates. I will not, you know, like stay home at all, whatever it was. And there were other people like, you have to do that. You have to do that. Right. And so now that it's been what five years since that started almost there are still people who cannot they have they are incapable of saying i was wrong and the reason is because the harm to their ego would be so tremendous like the cognitive dissonance would be so painful that they're not sure they could recover now if they allowed their ego to die and just like say you know what i fucked up that's easy i fucked up i was wrong then there would be no issue. I saw Naomi Wolf, who was basically like had a complete, at least in this particular topic, a complete change of character towards it. And she was being interviewed by Tucker Carlson. Now, if you guys don't know, Naomi Wolf was a hardcore, intersectional, fourth wave feminist. She got into a fight with Karen. Like there, there was like a discussion and she lost her shit. She was like, you know, just like all, of, all in, died in the wool. And ever since, 2019 the coof happened she was very much like questioning this whole narrative and she realized that a lot of what she was told by the mainstream media by the people who are considered to be the authorities was wrong and tucker asked her he said 
you have a bunch of friends. They're all hardcore feminists like you, yet they have all disowned you. Can you explain that? And she's like, I don't, I don't understand it. They're all smart. They should, they should have been doing what I was doing. You see, I can explain that because their ego is so invested in this, so invested in this lie. They want it to be true so badly that they will let everyone else suffer so they can continue to stay with it. And that's our, that's our main problem. That's why I've been saying yep. for the last few years is the, the biggest obstacle that humanity has is its, its dedication to its own pride and, and yeah, and its ego and the inability to say I was wrong. Cause that's what it takes. Like this whole thing with like men and women not getting along and all that shit, all it like literally women just have to say, you know what? I'm wrong about men. That's, that's all that has to happen. And men will and immediately, will they'll put down their sex dolls and they'll immediately go to women. But it is the most difficult thing for people to do. They'll like put down it their is sex the, dolls, they'll put down yep. their pornography. Yep. Everything. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I, and so like the, all of the stuff that we're about to hear is this, this is the same thing. It's this, it's this sunken cost. Like I bought into the stories. I bought into the lies. And I cannot let it go because what it means if I do is like just catastrophic for my ego and they will, they will, they will guard to the death their ego. So anyway, that's what I think. I'm sorry for the, for the. No, it's fine. It's good. Cause it it gives me a nice thing, a nice way to uh, give it an addendum. And when it comes to the situation between men and women, men have sunken cost fallacy when it comes to, being the one good man in the feminist framework, right? Think about it. The feminist framework basically makes the bar to being a good man ridiculously low. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't hate women. Yeah, like every fucking man on the planet, right? Like, mm-hmm. I breathe and poop. I get a gold star. I don't hate women. Give me that gold star. You know, like, and and but at the same time, it makes them feel... Like that makes them completely unique as a man, a complete individual, that their morality is entirely due to their own individual moral strength, which is like catnip to men. Yeah. And then it gives women a context to feel like a damsel. Mm Mm-hmm. And that is catnip to women. (laughs) And they both are invested in this narrative, which is why it's so hard to shift, even though it is, it's like, it's the simplest thing. You know, Mm -hmm. all women have to do is say, yeah, actually, I don't think men are that bad. Hold on a second. Jojo wants to come in here. Wow. Jojo actually wants to be with you? Here. Wow, this is a, this is a, he just wanted to, he he just wanted to smell me really quick, make sure I wasn't dead. (laughs) (laughs) Jojo, come here, buddy. Jojo, come here, buddy. He's not, I don't have Jojo cam up because I'm on a different scene. It was a dog um, wellness check. Yeah. Yeah. Jojo's very concerned. He's very protective of us. I found out my neighbor, she she watches Jojo for us on days where we need to go out and we can't bring him with us. And she she's a really sweet lady that lives downstairs and she has a dachshund named Jasper. Jasper's this cute little, you know, hot dog dog. And the poor guy has been um he's got cancer. And so we she's 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 devastated. I mean, it's just the dog. I know dogs aren't people, but it's tough, man. When your pet gets sick, I had to, I had a dog you before know, Jojo named Leslie and, and she had heart failure and um, it was killing me because I had her for like 10 years. So and that's the thing about dogs. So you invest like a lot of time into them and you know, they're going to die before you. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, what am I doing? But, hey, Jojo. Yeah, what are you doing? Like, you, yeah, I know. You know, honestly, I know that people say that dogs aren't people and they're not people, but they are their own thing. Like, a, it's like they're their well, they're, own. Well, they're very, thing. they're unique because they evolved with us. Yes. So there's something about like, that. Cats to a lesser degree, but it's like cats and dogs, they have their own unique intelligence. So they're their own entities. And the question really is, is can you have a friendship with an alien consciousness? And I think you can. Mm-hmm. And I think that could be just mm-hmm. as valuable as a friendship with a human consciousness. The, the difference is, of course, that, that dogs sort of need you to navigate 
the human world for them. I don't know. Is that too anthropomorphizing? Again, I recognize that <laughs> well, the I think we we have an in no 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 Jojo he's gonna want to be with you babe look go ahead Jojo go uh, I think that we have a tendency to anthropomorphize our pets sure I mean mm -hmm. Lindsay had a bird that she would anthropomorphize so I, I think it's natural for us to do that but yeah I mean I love dogs yeah. but yeah they're they're different okay so okay. um let's see so should I we play more okay I want now perhaps yeah I see I that I see that. Should How we look at this? We... You want to stop well, and do, do the a, beat let's savoring? Do like a, let's do um, let's do a mid-show break because I think we'll probably need one when the rage me reaches its peak, and we'll just we'll just I'll, take a bit of a break. I'll be chill. Um, You'll be chill. I'll try. I'll be chill. I'll try to be chill, anyways. Okay, but I'll yeah, well, well, you want to do some songs then? Yeah, let, let's just get into the the second video so we can start. You know, get. I have the video. Do you want me to play some of it? Yeah, okay. how much is the next... The next uh, well, bit? I'm skipping to 8.51, uh, where he he talks a bit about... Because uh, essentially, he's he's talking about Gamergate 2, okay? And the general okay, thrust right. of his... The general thrust of his video is to say, look, we don't want Gamergate 2. Please, I you know, he's not interested. He doesn't think there's a problem in the gaming industry. Even though we've covered, you know, like I have on... The Wednesday show, which is Badger Pod Gamergate, where I bring on guests and we talk about things. And I've also done a lot of stuff on Honey Badger Arcade, specifically talking about DEI um, and ESG and BlackRock and all these like gigantic, not just corporate, but government institutions that are meddling in this in this supposed hobby, which clearly is more than just a hobby. If they're like spending, you know, six figures, seven figures to essentially influence behaviors um, but I've covered it at length on there. So this isn't really just like, oh, you know, my, my women in video games are not sexy enough or they're too sexy or whatever. This is, this is about something far larger. And so he is going to give his two cents because he doesn't like the way that Gamergate led to essentially okay. like a political awakening. So... Want me All to play right. it? Let me let me yeah, before we get into it, I just wanted to say everybody who's been trying to use the uh adjust the tip, I think I fixed it. Because um I was oh, hearing back I did that get... there was some problems. Yeah, yeah. There's there are some messages that they couldn't get get through the checkout. It I think it's fixed now. At least one of you has managed to get through the checkout. So that's a positive sign. Also, related note, um I closed off the fundraiser and I've opened it again. Like it, that was completely unintentional. I didn't check. Um, I actually put the date um, this this Friday that just passed, and, and now I've extended the date to the end of the month, as it should be. So even though I was telling you to go there, that you couldn't actually support, but now you can. So all of the ways to give us money should work now, and if they don't, just message us on the chat function. So send those super chows, and I think I can do the requests now. Cross your fingers, we got something moving. So if you want to send a, me a, a song request, first, go and make sure that the song that you want is at beatsaber.com. B dot B saber. B letter B saber.com. Make sure the song is there. There should be a copy, link to it in the description. And copy the link to that specific song. Go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Put that song in the comment section of of uh, the 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 uh, comment and send that to us and that is the very best way to make sure we get your song selection because otherwise i have to go through and sometimes i still have to go through the search function but the search function can be very touchy it is incredibly obscure what it actually latches onto in terms mm -hmm. of like, the tags for your songs so this is the very best way and if I get through your song on the maximum difficulty, on your honor, you will put $25 in the hat for Brian, myself, and Hannah for the month, and HBR in general, because there's a few other people who are doing work behind the scenes for HBR. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, so feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send your comments or your song requests, and feedthebadger.com slash support if you want to help the show. And please do help the show so we can continue to bring you these unique insights you know what i'm just gonna say that these insights are unique they're the best insights the best 
All right, <laughs> let's do it. We got the best insights. That they they always tell me these insights are the best insights. That's what they tell me. All right, let's play it. What is going on in AAA right now? I don't care. Anyway, so there's that. Now, so he's talking about AAA gaming specifically, which Mark Kern and I I will also like co-sign this. Just don't buy any AAA games for like two years. Just absolutely starve them for two years and just do play your backlog support double a support indie anything else or just don't play video games at all i think we can do it i mean you know sometimes in order to do the right thing you have to do something that's uncomfortable but anyway oh i'll get and back to depression just was indie do you remember it was just depression quest and all of the yeah see the problem is is that there's a lot of pause content but the difference is that like you can avoid like the, you know, like, you know what the worst genre is, I think, for, for like totally like cringe feminist content? It's the dating simulators. Stay the fuck away from this dating simulators, guys, please. Maybe you like that stuff, okay? I'm not going to tell you what to buy, but like, think about it like this, okay? Because it's coming from the same place. The people who are writing fiction are writing these games. And like, they're the, the more narrative focused the game is, the more they can you know essentially doctor it to their particular liking so allison if you're talking about how awful literature is right now especially probably like romance or you know young adult novels are well guess what a lot of the narrative video games there'll be like you know the dating sims or the life is strange type games they're gonna have that same you know paused influence so you can just play something else there's plenty of good indies just be discerning and the thing is that those tend to be cheaper, um, you know, and just go with word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So, well, what I was going to say is that um, honestly, romance is one of the few genres I have any hope for left. And the reason mm. why is because at the very least, at the end of the book, the woman will end up appreciating one man, you know? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Is that like, is that maybe, is that even the goal of a romance novel? Like, what if they don't end that way? What if it's just... Well, that's not the... Like, like, okay, all right. The the platonic ideal, platonic ideal of a romance is that both characters are each other's um, adversaries. And the, mm -hmm. and the conclusion of the romance is that they recognize they have to set aside their own ego to gain something more from the relationship. So that's yeah. the way romance is supposed to be written. Everything else is not a freaking romance. Technically, romances that end tragically, not romances. Like Romeo so and Juliet. That well, that's technically, literally, it's called a tragedy. So, but then yeah, it's so only that, it's, it's 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 recognized as a tragedy, which is does have itself a romantic element because yeah, the fact that it didn't like end that. the way you wanted it to um, tells you that it should not have ended that way, and that's why you find it tragic. But Okay, well, anyway, let's play this Yeah, video. it's like a, it's a tragedy with romantic elements. But yeah, anyways, the yeah. platonic ideal of, of romance is that both characters set aside their ego in favor of pursuing, um, a, like, a, a, the relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, there are fake romances out there in which the woman, doesn't, woman does not do this. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting into the one true romance, I think. Uh, but honestly, I would say that, like... Whatever you, whatever these romantic writers are writing, it's not romance unless the woman is also setting aside her ego. Yeah. In favor well, of family. Good production. luck with that. Okay, yeah. I'm going to play the video now. The uh, the actual uh, sweet baby thing in a moment. The other thing I want to clarify is the other reason this is not Gamergate Part Two, and I'm not going to participate in Gamergate Part Two if it is. Remember what what was the only thing that happened as a result that was that Gamergate one actually contributed to? What was it? Donald Trump getting elected. The whole reason that thing got rolling was because you know no one knew it at the time, but Steve Bannon was going around uh, stirring up these pockets of internet outrage so that Donald Trump could get so that everyone would get behind Donald Trump. Well, not having Donald Trump as president, and notice by the way the timing that Gamergate two quote unquote just seems to happen to be rolling out right as every right as they're trying to get Donald Trump reelected. Note, you know, notice, just, just stop for a minute and just understand, Donald Trump not being president matters a hell of a lot more to me than, gamer ga than, than anything going on in video games. There okay, can I just, okay, I am agnostic, <sighs> politically yeah. agnostic. 
I do not think that Donald Trump getting elected or not getting elected matters more than what is happening in game, gamer in in games or literature or art or Hollywood or TV. I, I, I maybe maybe I'm an asshole or I'm wrong, but I think that those are more important because that is the substrate for our future and how we view ourselves. Okay, now if Donald Trump gets elected, he probably will be constrained by the same things he was constrained by for the first time, as, as will anybody who gets elected, because this change is not going to come top down. It's going to come bottom up. And the, the bottom up changes come through stories. Okay, go ahead. I, and I honestly, I think that this idea that the politics is more important than the culture is wrong on its face. And I don't have a strong opinion about who wins the race. I mean, I think probably the one who's less likely to get you guys into a war is better. But, you know, I'll leave that up to Americans because I'm not one. Sounds like it sounds like Trump to me. I mean, I'm not like all I will say is that um, something is wrong with his brain that he is okay with forever wars returning, which it did like immediately after Joe Biden went into office, runaway inflation, um, you know, the border is wide open. Like, I mean, we can bring Karen on and she can go on for hours about all the things that are wrong with the way our country is going right now. And all of the things that did not go wrong when Trump was in office. This is not me being a suck up MAGA guy. This is me just looking at the, the what was really happening and saying, look, things aren't that bad. Yes, the media went crazy, but that's not the people. That's like elitist Manhattanites, you know, like whining because I don't even know what, because their, you know, their favorite pedophile isn't running the, the country or whatever. So this is complete. This is why I said I don't think he's an autist, because this is completely irrational. I don't know if like his lesbian friends are rubbing off on him and they're the ones that are really angry. But and it gets Lesbian better because it, rubbing off on him. <laughs> yeah, they're rubbing off on him like, uh, you know, um, <laughs> both both, uh, um, you know, symbolically and literally. <laughs> but I mean, because it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, guys. Look, I've been dealing with people that have TDS for like, what is it? 24, 24 now. So what? Since since um, fucking 2016. And I have I have never been a diehard MAGA person. I just was like, well, who's the who's the the best option of what is out there? I'm sure there's some some guy somewhere in our country that could run the country better than anyone else. But guess what? That guy's not running. So wh who's the best option? OK, this I think it's Trump right right now. Right. He's like the outsider, whatever. He's again, no wars, no wars when he was in office like he ended shit. That was it. He made deals with people. He shook hands with fucking Kim Jong-un and took pictures with him, right? And then he leaves, and all of a sudden, now what's happening? What do we got? We got Ukraine and Russia. We got fucking um, Israel and, and Palestine. And then Iran just sent a bunch of drones over there. We got China moving in on Taiwan. Why wasn't this happening in, in 2019? Why wasn't this okay. happening? And, and wait, wait. wait. OK, not only that, but our border is wide open. And now the people who were calling it racist to put a wall up before are saying, wow, you know, that's we should probably do something about this immigration problem. Now that there's fucking people squatting in their mansions and they're like, why are these immigrants over here? Why are people being killed by like random immigrants? Why are their their children like literally with phone numbers written on them to send them to like sweatshops and like sex traffickers? Like, and it's, it's been proven. Like this is happening. And Trump said that was happening when he was running for office. So I'm not saying he's God, but dude, he was right about a lot of things. And we have to remember when I was talking about ego before. Yeah, we got to squash that and say I was wrong and we got to fix it. And this guy, he is so insane. This is completely unhinged behavior and it gets worse and I'll play more. So like you can be indifferent if you want to, but I'm not asking people to choose a side. I'm not asking for that. And I know that this won't be solved top way. down, but, but he can, he can make things less worse 
And that would be nice. We want What we want from the government is for them to get the fuck out of the way. And the only way that will happen is if we have people in office that will be less of an obstacle so that we can build society. That's the purpose of the state. You can't pretend like it doesn't have an impact because it's having an impact now because it's overreaching like crazy. I mean, we're being monitored by the Department of Homeland Security right now. The FBI is on the internet watching people. There are people being thrown in prison, thrown in prison for standing near the Capitol on January 6th. The, the government is not the solution, but it is yeah. the problem and we have to minimize it but it will always exist you cannot live in a world without the state because we have been raised to de be dependent on it so what we want is a state that is as little intrusive as possible that's the reality so we're just okay. gonna have to work with that all right now that be as it may i'm gonna give my 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 two cents here he wants Gamergate to stop. Gamergate 2 to stop because he does not want a particular politician to come into power. That is ridiculous. First of all, that's a meme, dude. Now, this may be actually his autism showing big time. But it is a meme that Gamergate got Trump elected. It's ridiculous. It's probably highly unlikely. Okay? But to say that, oh, we, we shouldn't oppose this force of cultural negation because somebody you don't like is going to end up in a political office is insane. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say where I'm coming from. All right. And this is going to possibly offend people. But I was, permit, I was banned from the U.S. for five years as a result, a direct result of one of Trump's memos and probably also some kind of Department of Homeland Security shenanigans, right? That's something that happened to me. So I guarantee that Trump's existence has harmed me more, infinitely more than this man, than it has harmed this man or any of his friends or most Americans, all right? Including the ones who are insanely opposed to him. And yet I can see that he does not he does not strike me as being the second coming of satan okay mm -hmm. right he doesn't strike me that way okay i don't have this level of animus okay and the reason why i don't have this level of animus is because i'm not nuts like there's no there's no man in necessarily in american politics that really deserves this level of animus or I don't see any particular person, and, and maybe I'm just ignorant. Maybe Biden deserves no. this level of animus. But it's just like, could you could you chill? Right? Could you chill out? Could you just be like, okay, well, he is a politician, all right? You know, he has particular uh, viewpoints that probably would benefit you guys if he's more prone to getting uh, the government out of your way. You know, whatever you, whatever stance you have on that, fine. But to say that we, sh that people should stop defending the fundamental components of of human cultural inheritance, like I can't emphasize this enough. This is our cultural inheritance, right? That people should stop defending it because it has an outside possibility that it might get a guy you don't like elected. That's freaking absurd. Yep. It's and, and I'm saying that as somebody who, you know, if Trump gets elected, I may never be able to go back to the US. Oh, Allison, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Yeah. He didn't he didn't yeah. single you out. He didn't go, hey, let's ban Allison. He didn't do that. That's that that's that, absurd. But Brian, no, but Brian, you're Allison, Allison, Brian, stop. Stop wait, it. Wait. Stop it. That was a problem before he got into office. He didn't do that to you. That, like this, okay. it just, it, you know, it's, okay, stop it, this is okay? A criticism. This is a fair criticism that he did send a memo to the northern border about the very thing that got me banned. Now, it probably is some kind of weird collusion between also being on, for whatever reason, the Department of Homeland Security's watch list, but this is a contributing factor to it. It just is. 
and I'm not saying he targeted me specifically. He just targeted the nationality that I'm a part of. And I'm not even saying he necessarily targeted it. He may not have even really thought about the effect at all. He was just concerned with American interests. I'm saying that I have more legitimate right to be crazy than this individual. And I can look at this. This man is advocating for American interests first. Okay? Yeah, I went through mm -hmm. a horrible experience. But I can respect that. Okay? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could say it's a problem of bureaucracy or whatever. I don't yes, think anybody was targeted. You like, can say it is a yeah. problem with local warlordism in, in the, uh, the people who monitor the northern border, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But my overall point is that I have more legitimate reason to be pissed, and I mm -hmm. can still be objective and say, is this man a benefit to his people? Yes or no? Okay? Now, I don't know what, what about, like, I, I'm going to keep my opinion reserved on, on Biden. I'm not, I don't really, I'm just saying that. I'm saying yeah, that. Yeah, sure. I'm, he has no cause to be this insane. To no, I think, I think people it's, should yeah. protect it's... the culture. People shouldn't protect their cultural inheritance. People should, like a cultural inheritance is as important as a genetic inheritance. Mm -hmm. Right? It's as important as who you are genetically. Maybe even more. Because it becomes who you are emotionally in your soul. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that he's saying, oh, I don't like this person. So, you know, off the offhand chance yeah. of you guys protecting your cultural inheritance will lead to this guy. Bullshit. That is the shittiest. That is the shittiest reason possible. And I see that. OK. Right. No, I mean, I agree. And again, you know, like it's kind of a well, it's a non starter because we're going to do what we're going to do anyway. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. You want to call it Gamergate 2? Call it Ooga Booga Lula. Whatever you want to call it, right? Call it Rubber Baby bubby, Buggy Bumpers. It's still happening. There's nothing you can do about it. And if it le like, I mean, whatever, right? So he's just, he's trying to, like, suggest that there were people pulling levers behind the scenes. You know why Steve Bannon got involved with, like, Gamergate in any way? It was because Milo Yiannopoulos got involved with Gamergate and they knew each other. Do you know why Milo Yiannopoulos got involved with Gamergate? Because nobody else wanted to talk to us. So, like, if you're if you're questioning, like, how did it happen? It wasn't like they took the reins. It's because when gamers were attacked, the left wouldn't talk to us. Kind of like men. You know, when men are, like, in trouble and the left says, fuck you guys, you're the reason for all the problem and the suffering in the world, and then they go to Andrew Tate instead? Yeah, that's kind of the same fucking thing. So what are you going to do? Well, you probably should listen to men and maybe like hear out their grievances and maybe address them. Oh, maybe you, you, you know, commies over at Kotaku should listen to gamers, but you're not going to. So they're going to go somewhere else. So when they do, you don't get to get angry about that. Nope. And okay. uh, I just want to point something out. Like listening to men requires, also requires men letting go of their ego around being the one good man. Mm hmm for sure it's a dynamic between men and women like th that's i think the big difference between me and feminists they're like oh it's men oppressing women no it's a dynamic it's men having a particular way of viewing themselves and women having a particular way of viewing themselves and both interacting toxically right okay yep all right i'm play more there is no cause on this earth that i can and i'm not kidding there's no cause on this earth that I care about more than Donald Trump not being president. I, I care, I, I, you know, you want, to stay, you want me to choose between Donald Trump being president and not having annoying, Hi. preachy shit in video games. Sorry, this matters a lot, a whole fuck of a lot more. I, why? I care why? Because he watches The Daily Show like it's a religion, that's why. Because he's, he, look... This is the funny thing about these people, okay? They were supporting Gamergate. And one of the primary issues, the like if not the 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 linchpin outside of the Zoe Quinn thing, that just brought attention to it. I'm talking the linchpin of Gamergate are the gamers are dead articles. And it exposed the bias of the media, the Jane game in games journalism. But that later 
became criticism of all media, rightfully so. We were already doing that. We would go through articles from The Guardian and Slate and MSNBC and CNN, the BBC and ABC and all these other, like, you know, um, news organizations. And we were learning that they were all full of shit and they were also all on the same page. And a lot of them, like, you know, a lot of the same people, they all knew each other and all of that. So there was obviously a tremendous amount of bias in not just games journalism, but journalism, period. And it, we were also getting to the root of where it was coming from. A lot of it was starting in, in you know, university and education. You basically create a bunch of activists and they're, they like to write blogs and you put them in the into the world of journalism where they get to put their spin on everything. So we knew that the media have been lying to us. They're like the main reason why we're, we're, there is any measurable divide is because the media lies constantly. And yet, these people who should have known that the media lies because of Gamergate, well, they no, they were like, well, the media, the, the games journalists lie, but not the real journalists. Not, not the real journalists that are doing real news. They never lie. CNN, they never lie. Fucking um, PBS, they never lie. They did like multiple hit pieces on like the misogyny in video games, but uh, but that's but that's just an op ed. That's not news. The news people, they never lie, right? And and of course, they lied around the clock, and all of them in unison about the same issues. Whether it was about, um, it could have been about Trump, but didn't have to be. They would they they lied about us. They lied about men's rights activists and and the ICMI. They lied about yeah. Recently, they did. They they lie about Gamergate. They lie about um, you know Christians. Like they lie about whoever is the the group that's that they consider the out group. And for some reason, guys like this guy, guys like you know uh, the the guy who's doing the Gamergate documentary. Well, he believes that. While all of the lies about gamers are on point, like those people are lying and I can tell about this little petty shit, but when it comes to really important shit, no, 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 they would never lie. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, if the media can lie about the pettiest shit, like video games, why wouldn't they lie about important shit, like wars? <laughs> you know what I mean? And they do! And so, like, all I'm doing is taking the same skepticism that I had about, you know, issues regarding feminism and men's issues and Gamergate stuff and, and whatnot. And I'm just taking that to its logical conclusion. And I'm carrying the same skepticism into the, the, the real news of the world. And I'm just like, well, is this true? I don't know. These people are always lying. Why? Like how many times, right? But Jordan Owen here, he doesn't have the ability to say, well, the games journalists lie, but they're totally right about Trump. And that's why like, I'm baffled. I'm like, well, what is it that What's the danger? I don't know because I haven't been able to find it. And the truth is I'm, I don't watch CNN, so I'm not under the programming. I don't watch them. And they just, because they lie all the time. Like how many times does somebody lie to you before you just stop listening to them? All right. You know, let's, uh, let's, let's go all right. a little we'll play bit some more. more. Apparently forever. Well, the thing is that he has to admit that he was lied to. He, he would, but they can't. It's, again, it's pride. Says, uh, it's you can't... easier to fool someone than to convince them that they have been fooled. Exactly, yes. All right, let's play this. About Donald Trump not being president. I, and I am not kidding when I say I don't care, short of, I don't believe, we should not get to the point, we should not be rooting for assassination. I don't want that. I'm not calling for assassination at all. But short of that, there is nothing nothing that I'm not in favor of. I want a stolen election. I want the, if the peep, if the will of the people is to, is Donald Trump, I want the will of the people defied by the people in power. I want You literally freedoms. want to destroy democracy, re uh, Republican. You re literally want to destroy the Republic in order to avoid this guy. Th yep. That's a, uh, that's, pretty insane it's just your tip this is uh, allison i know you're not gonna like this but this is typical of leftists this is typical yeah, well, of statists no, statism I'm not, I'm not, is leftism this is what they like do this. well because okay. i think that you have a tendency to be like well it's yeah you know and so i'm just saying this is not that abnormal like if you go go to the comments and people are like oh yeah 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 i mean for their own good like why why would we let people vote for who they want what is this? Some kind of republic? We can't have that because the orange man. And you know, honestly, I got to say, if it wasn't him, 
let's say that it was Vivek Ramaswamy that ended up being the nominee. It'd be the same shit. Like, it's not about who it is. It's about the idea that they don't think people should have a choice. They think that they know what is best for us. And they promote okay, that. Gonna, That's I'm going to say go something. Fascism starts with an enemy. Sure. And out, out, like uh, out of control threat response. And that's what I'm seeing here. Like, was he really that bad? Like, did you go no. to camps? Like, no. Well, I mean, he did institute the COVID, sh or the COOF shit, but. Well, again, I think that that started off with no one knowing what was going on. But he said three weeks to stop the spread and he never mandated the, the, the jab. He never did that. That came after. Then there were mandates. He said three weeks to stop the spread. I know, look, I get it. I, I think there's criticisms, but I think they should be fair. And I think that being that yeah, we didn't have fine. all the information, that's kind of like what it makes sense that, that things turned out that way. Okay. But go ahead. So what is it that was that happened that was so awful? Like the guy, like honestly, if you look he at his He was mean policy, on Twitter. He was he's mean on Twitter. Basically a little left of Bill Clinton. So get over yourselves. I was alive with Bill Clinton was around. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to like your threat response is out of control. And fa fascism truly begins with an enemy. Because that's what convinces people to do crap like this. Get mm -hmm. rid of constitutional protections. Get rid of rep uh, a representational uh, republic. You know, get rid of all of that just because you want to neutralize your enemy du jour. All right, we're not at war with Oceana. Okay, um, somebody op opposing you is not evil. And it's like, uh, this is what I saw when we were on that channel, WIC. Okay, out of control threat response. response. Mm -hmm. This is, you know how I said that when women don't have families, they go into this bizarre states where they they proje project their instincts to nurture something vulnerable onto minorities yeah and karen called that the the monolithic infant class i think single men and maybe he isn't single who knows but he's definitely infested with this single men do the same thing when it comes to threat response mm -hmm. their threat responses are outrageous and unhinged instead of protecting a family they protect their ideologies mm-hmm Okay. It's almost like there's a benefit to a class of people if you turn men into this kind of person. Just like there's a benefit yep. to a certain class of people if you turn women into, you know, these kind of like um, infantilizing yeah, well, activist types. Like this. If this man had children, do you think he'd be saying like, "Oh, let's let's tear apart no. the basic fundamental?" No, because he'd be thinking about. Yeah, because he'd be thinking yeah, about the thinking world about he would leave future. behind. Right. He'd be thinking yes. about the future that his children have to be in. He would have yes. a more accurate threat response because included mm -hmm. in it would be, I need to, I need to work towards a stable society for my children, right? That's what's missing. Yep. Okay. And if he is yep. a father, it's still missing. That is what's I, missing in this man. I am going to go on a limb and say he's not, but I got some super childs. I should read them before they disappear. So let me just read them really quick and we can play some more of this. Um, Richard Bier gives us five bucks and says, "Are you trying to summon Burger King?" I don't, I don't get that, but he puts a burger and a king, a crown. So I'm assuming that means Burger King. Um, thank it's you. And then before. it's it's uh it's uh Burger King and fries. So that's an acronym that refers to a specific oh uh, poster. I don't know if he's still in the Discord. He may have left. I put him in the center of the maze. It was really funny because um. At one point, we had like this invasion by, I don't know, it was either communists or feminists. And I warned them. I said, don't go into the center of the maze because there is a minotaur at the center of the maze. And his name is Burger <laughs> King and Fries. Oh, and they oh. And then they tried to insist that. His, I, I know, I know who it is. Attitudes, I know who it is. His yeah. behavior and attitudes reflected that of the entire Discord. No, the person we have entombed in our jail, Discord labyrinth jail is not who we consider to be a reflection of what we believe and it was mm -hmm. outrageous but anyway it was like mm. it was a that's who you will you about. will hear about lesbians though if you go into the you maze will. that's no, the, the minotaur got, likes to talk about lesbians you, you uh yeah i do i do i got it um okay then i got another one from anonymous for five bucks and they say do you do you think dogs doggo 
Promifies. I don't know what that means, but thank you for the um, esoteric comment. <laughs> and then Richard Pierre gives us five bucks and says, we just watched The Founder about how Ray Kroc basically stole the McDonald's name from the McDonald brothers and essentially took over the brothers' vision. It could be an allegory about how bureaucracies come into being. Don't forget how much SJW nonsense became so prevalent right after Trump got elected. So much of it was in niche and obscure corners of the internet, but the Trump election was a go signal for all of the activists to rise up on the same day at the same time as if there was some coordination and it was all choreographed ahead of time. I tend to agree with that because the, the stuff stuff that stuff that um we didn't like we, we consider to be fringe is now like it's basically at the highest in the highest offices of the land like stuff like you know being like a gender or whatever all this like weird pronoun stuff that was like you know originally in the in the catacombs of tumblr are now just like out there for everyone to see so i think there is something about that and then right. richard pierre gives wait, us wait, five wait, bucks wait, and wait, says wait, wait. we oh okay brian, brian can you hear me oh sorry you probably can't hear me i guess I'm no low. i can hear you i can hear you it's because all the feminists made the inroads yeah like this wacky, like there, it, it, it's like a cordyceps, you know, like it's got its tendrils and it was all feminism that got tendrils mm -hmm. into everything because it appealed to powerful men's desire to save women. And, um, you know, it just got into influential tendrils every, everywhere. And then this new infection piggybacked on the old infection. Yep. So it's like this weird concoct, like, but that's how it got in in the first place was feminism, was this construction. The rock comes through this construction or this framing of men as, as being uh, uh, women's enemies. Mm -hmm. And then everything else seems to fall down from that. Okay, um, I just uh, want to say that I think I know what the, what he means. Doggo promorphize. Do oh, dog, oh, doggo I get it. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 right. Dogs actually are aware that we are different from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they like us quite a bit. I think they do. Yeah, they just they do. They, they feel safer around us, and we give them food. Um, yeah. Richard Bier gives us five bucks and says we are at war with East Asia, though. And then Zeranx gives us five bucks and says the irony is Jordan's advocating for both Gamergate two and Donald Trump. He fully supported the first 2014 Gamergate outing necessary to mention since trump didn't announce until the mid 2015 and implies he'd support the second iteration if only trump possibly wouldn't have a chance to end up as president now despite knowing the home keys i'm starting to think maybe the documentary might have been the fault of owens rather than davis arini maybe i don't really know the story of that but all i would say is that like i don't know what i would ask is that people just Stop believing the media. Do your own research. Talk to people around you. Get a sense of like what reality is because they're feeding you a line, you know, and it's it's making you extremely you're like the most irrational autist I've ever seen. <laughs> so, but anyway, let's play some more because it gets better, Allison. It gets better. Stricken from the record, if that is what's what? necessary to have no Donald Trump. It, in, in the White House ever again. The only thing I care about is making sure that Captain Manosphere never gets another four years in the White House. Apparently Donald Trump is Captain Manosphere too, by the way. No evidence of that. I, th I think in one interview, one time, he said, you know, men have it tough too because they were trying to make it about women for something. And he said, men have it tough too. Um, and men have problems. And that uh, we you know, like, and that's it. Like, he didn't go into a whole thing about the Duluth model. Nobody's saying he's an MRA, <laughs> you know. But I think that he was just acknowledging the fact that sometimes it's not about women. Sometimes men also have issues. And of course, the media went on a fucking tirade because everything he says, they have to use it to demonize him, but they demonize men in the process. I remember, uh, what was his name? The guy, Trevor Noah, yeah, he did a whole thing I'm about it. Trevor, Trevor Noah did a whole thing on it. What was that, Allison? I, that's something I will definitely give Donald Trump. He's the only politician I've ever heard that gives any attention to men's issues. Aside from yeah, him issues, and like Philip Josh, Davies in the UK. Philip Davies, Josh Hawley did a whole speech on it. 
but the be but it is generally like unheard of because it isn't politically expedient in general like to do that you know in general with like not just like feminists okay women don't like it when you put the put the when you take attention away from them and put it on men like like this is like it could it could have been considered box oh, office typically boys are not box office i'm sorry like you know election poison to do that but he was i think he was already president when he when he said that about men so specifically when you recognize women as moral agents it challenges their identity as damsels mm -hmm. and it's it's I, i've seen i've watched the discomfort that women get into like there's this one woman i was listening to yesterday and she's older and she's on one of these streams oh um it, the name of the guy is uh, Phoebus, I believe, and he's on Twitter and he does streams regularly. So check it out. Lots of conversation. It was interesting when I when I was listening to it. Were you in um, there? Yeah, I was in there. I actually talked a long time. And Phoebus ha definitely has a uh, Phobos. Phobos or Phoebus? It's like a, a moon of um, I think. Uh, Phobos. Phobos. Yes, Phobos. Um, Phobos. Yes. Um. And yeah, I was on there, and he's got a really hard story. I won't go into it, but it mm. was very okay, very sad. Um, but anyway, there was a woman on her his stream that was talking about why can't men's issues be addressed without, you know, demonizing women. I'm like, and I'm thinking I didn't say anything. I was just listening to what she had to say, and then another woman piped up and said, "You can't take it personally. You've got to let that go." I mean, there's no way to recognize men's issues without recognizing the fact that women are often the instruments of harm in their life. That women can yeah. be bad. That doesn't mean that women are universally bad, although if they are hold, held to no standard, they are more likely to be bad than good. I'm going to be honest. But it, it does, I mean, if you, if you judge things by men and whether or not women are harming men, like that's completely novel. And since we don't, Women get away, completely get away with all kinds of crappy behavior. So right now, before we establish that women should be judged by how well they treat men and use the particular powers granted to them by Mother Nature to not abuse and harm men or, or laws, you know, until we do that, until we have that social attitude, women will be, uh, well, there will be a large point part of women who are bad simply because they get away with it or they don't even mm. know they have to care about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just the way it is. People generally are only a good as, as good as the standard you hold them to. Mm -hmm. And you aren't going to change that by insisting on ignoring or insisting on putting women's egos first or their ego connection to being damsels, because that's the real threat. When you say, no, you're actually a moral actor. You can be a villain or a hero as a woman that means you're no longer a damsel primarily mm -hmm. you now have to make moral choices you have to put something outside of yourself as more important than yourself morally and they that that's a real threat to the identity that everything should revolve around you which is the damsel identity the damsel determines the villain the damsel determines the hero the damsel determines the goal the damsel determines whether or not that goal is met she determines everything in a story. She is the story. She is the right? table. She is the yeah. table. And that <laughs> is threatened when you tell a woman you're not the table. Mm -hmm. You know, you are just another person trying to get a table. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, and I think All that's right. what, what pisses women off about Pearl. Okay, yeah, for going. sure. All, All right. right. And I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Don't just abandon any uh, any pretext about that. I don't want to hear about, oh, so you're in favor of destroying the United States if it means keeping Donald Trump out of the White House. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. A thousand times. Yes. If we have if, if we have to, if keep making Donald Trump, keeping yeah, Donald Trump from being it. president means that we have to uh, set up um detonations around Mar-a-Lago and floated out into the ocean. I don't care. 
That was an extreme example to try to be funny, but I don't care what we have to do. Uh, I, I don't even care if he dies of natural causes. I'm not going to call for anybody to be assassinated, but if he, if he killed over uh, just from natural causes, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I don't care. That's all I, the only thing I care about. Rig the ballots. I want to go in. I want to go. Guy. Huh? What? Where is this? Like, what is this? Where is this coming from? It's Trump derangement syndrome, Allison. This is Trump derangement syndrome. This is what it looks like. This is not, this is not weird. This is not weird. This is not abnormal. I'm sorry, guys. It's not. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it in people that I that I like considered friends for like decades and they stopped talking to me because not because I said, you know, like I'm ride or die for Trump, but because I said, well, maybe he's not as evil as you think he is. And they're like, well, I can't I can't talk to you. And you know what it is, is that it's it's an investment of their ego. They again, like, look, the people burned cities down across the country for Black Lives Matter because and part of it had to do with the fact that trump was in office people supported that and they and they they ex explained it away like well i can understand why people are angry so i guess that makes it okay now those cities will never recover like they will never recover not in my lifetime and they will never be able to take a step back and say i should not have backed that horse what were you going to say? You think what? That have been damaged from riots in the 1930s. Yeah, I've, I've there are there are cities that there are riots. neighborhoods there are neighborhoods in Chicago that never recovered from riots when Martin Luther King was assassinated. They've never recovered, and after the 2020 Summer of Love stuff, this was related to Trump because it was all a vehicle. It was an election year. It was set up to do this on purpose. To discredit him in the hopes that it would affect the votes they're trying to they're trying to do it again this year i made a prediction i think it was in like february i put out a, a, a short video on my channel and i said they're they're going to try to start another summer of love in 2024 in order to affect people's votes and they're going to use an incident all they got to do is wait because they've already like they've already let a bunch of you know illegals across the border they've let them in there are already criminals in here. They're squatting in people's houses. They're they're looting. They're you know they're whatever. They're just like filling the streets. And they've also in these major blue cities, they've like cut the budgets of policing like way down, so cops can't do their job. And now all they got to do is wait. All they got to do is wait because eventually, when it gets warm enough and people get crazy, some something's gonna happen, and there's gonna be some incident that is politically expedient. So that they can do more riots and they're going to do more riots. That's um, I promise you that's what it is. It has nothing to do with everything they claim it is. It's all about creating, like, like you just lay out the pieces. You know, we'll, we'll cut down the police. We'll let a bunch of illegals in here. We'll, you know, um, do all this, like... Uh, soft on crime shit will have like all of these DAs and they're gonna they're gonna take criminals and, and like set them free the next day We're not gonna hold them. We're gonna have weird ass laws and then we're just gonna wait We're just gonna wait and then what will happen is someone will be killed under circumstances that can be politically used To create um, the opportunities for riots and there will be riots. I promise you in fact something just happened in Chicago in in Humboldt Park where I lived before I moved here a black man was shot by police and the way the media reported it was they were like he was shot 90 something times they just kept on unloading in him omg this is so bad but when you look at the story the guy shot at the police first and he refused to comply and basically it was just a shootout between two sides right and it ended with his death but to see that doesn't matter that doesn't matter because this is not about that this is about creating opportunities for riots and violence just so that they can win the election. I promise you that's what it is. Now, does it make sense? Absolutely not. But does it matter to them? No, of course, because their power is what matters. They will stay in power for as long as it takes. They will do pull every trick in the book. And Jordan Owen here is a useful idiot because he is falling for it. Just like most of these leftists, they're useful idiots. They become activists that think they're smarter than people that they're not. 
and they act on and agree with things that ultimately lead to their own destruction. And even as the city burns down around them, they will say, this is the fault of Donald Trump or white supremacy or men or whatever it is, whatever the scapegoat is. And they will just go along with it. But, you know, we should be worried about Project 2025. That's the real problem. Oh, OK, let's keep going. All right into the ballot box or into the the voting booth on election day and if i check the donald trump box i want it to go i want it to make a buzzing noise and go up and check joe biden instead just and goes to joe biden like you can't even do it i i i want everything done to stop donald trump from being president and all of the annoying woke shit th that th this is this is it's not stuff i like but it is stuff that they get you to care about so that they so that you will think that reelecting the orange howler monkey is a good thing. So anyway, so that's my that's where I am. Uh, I thought that was a thing about abortion. Let me see if I can jump ahead, because that's kind of crazy, too. Um, so that was eight, 12 minutes in. Um, I guess there's a little bit more about about trump i guess i don't know i could just jump to another part if you're tired of that i think we get this the idea he he doesn't care about rules he doesn't care about democracy you know it's funny well, let me put it this the way the, i have i don't have a lot of emotional investment in this aside from being astounded that he would destroy his country and the democratic process because of one man um but you know like it just seems like it's just the same shit over and over again. So yeah, I would like to move to a different. Yeah, platform. we can move on to the next bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like I don't know. Uh, so the next bit, you let me know if this interests you, but because um, uh, Great Indoors did tag it. So at 13 minutes in, about ethics in the gaming industry for what it's worth after the previous section. Uh, then I don't know if that is worth it. Then there's 15, 18, the open dialogue about woke stuff in media and how we don't need jackbooted thugs. Um, I don't know that that's going to add much. I remember watching it, but it didn't really, I was just like, well, look, I think that you're not looking in the, at this in the correct way when it comes to like why our media is being sort of, you know, vandalized. Cause that's what it is. It's, we're being, we're experiencing cultural vandalism. It's, it's not because um like there's no like real sort of like i don't know authoritarian force being used here but there is a strong desire from elites like people like larry fink who said himself he wants to force behaviors and people at bridge and these people are you know this this problem of the arts being used in this way weaponized against people it's old this is a very old thing. I've been I've been researching um, the art movements of history, and ever since the um, Enlightenment, things have been going downhill in that regard. It's become elitist, like very very elitist over time, and um, and I think that we're experiencing that like it's sort of showing its face today in our, not just in our visual art, although that's been going on for a long time, but also in our media. So, you know, when it was something that was confined to like a gallery or a museum, um, maybe people would just like, you know, they would just consider it subjective. They'd be like, well, I like Andy Warhol. I don't like Andy Warhol or whatever, right? And they would move on. But now that, and, and at that time, there was this distinction. Like it was like you were either an artist or you were an illustrator. As a, as a person who created like paintings or drawings or whatever. And the difference was, is your art um, saying something about the world that we think is important? Not like, because all, all art is saying something, but what they're saying is, is, is your art saying something that we think is important? Like, um, you know, when I think it was um, Marcel Duchamp, when he did these, he did these interesting paintings of motion. I can't remember the name of them. I think they were kind of untitled, or it was like women on this woman on the stairs or something. And it was like this very blurry painting that was supposed to resemble a woman walking up some stairs or down some or man descending the stairs. That's what it was called, man descending the stairs. And 
you could see what it was supposed to be, but it was very abstract, but it was not um, a statement uh, uh, outside of anything else, except he was exploring like a new way of making things. And his artwork, that artwork wasn't recognized until later in his career, but what really put him on the map was, um, I think it's called The Fountain. And that was when he took a urinal out of the context of the bathroom. I think he turned it on a, on its side and he painted some letters on it and then put it as a display. And this is like, this is like the very, very famous piece now, because what he was doing was he was subverting the concept of what an art piece is. But he was and of course, also, he was also mocking the art world. He was, but people took it seriously. Yes. I mean, afterwards it like, he was like, well, I didn't mean for this to be like the way we see it, but it did. Then everyone was uh, like, and th when I say everyone, I don't mean regular people. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like these sort of the, the snobby elitist art world of curators and critics and museum uh, owners and gallery owners and such, right. And collectors. And these were all very like well-to-do, like, you know, high society types. And they would all stand around the fountain and they would stroke their beards and puff on their pipes and, and, you know, um, and, and talk at length about like what it meant. And they, and this was like a thing that happened. Meanwhile, you know, and, and that was, it, it sort of like transformed the entire art world was transformed by that because then there was a great divide. And part of it also had to do with the fact that we had the print, we were able to print art now. So whereas in the past, you know, if you made a piece, it was like the, you, you would have to reproduce it in order for people to um, have, have their own. So like the individuality of that piece was what made it special. But with, but that, that didn't mean that normal people didn't have an appreciation for the beautiful. Right. And so like um, this changed the visual arts forever. Like after that, it was just like this growing split between the contemporary, which was constantly changing. And it was very important, again, that it had a message that was political in nature, ideally, or at least some kind of like activist message you got. And then there were there were gatekeepers, you know, like I talked to um, uh, Jay Ishiro and Kat Rocha, who wrote a book. Um, I, I forgot what it's called, but I do have it's called Boo. I think it's called Boobs of Steel, but it was about the ways in which the art world you know was gate kept and and also the 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 fiction world was too so the, you know they were talking about how these guys like isaac asimov for example uh they were these very famous science fiction writers and they were but they were also gatekeepers in the sense that they would only promote other writers that again made the kind of work that they felt should have been promoted because it shared their values. So Isaac Asimov was a big fan of reducing the population to, to save the planet. For example, he was okay with eugenics. He was okay with, you know, um, like essentially, you know, uh, killing people for climate change or whatever. And, and he would put it in all his work and he would only promote other writers that would do the same thing. So the few people who managed to still make an impact did so despite that guys like Tolkien and C.S. Lewis who kind of predated, I think they predated Asimov anyway, but even guys after that, like Heinlein and the guy who wrote, uh, what's the name of those space books that are really popular. I can't remember the name of it. They made a movie with Harrison Ford. It was like some kid. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was a, it, but the guy who wrote it there, they, they tried to like essentially say, well, you shouldn't read his books cause he's a homophobe. And there was no evidence of that. But people believed it. Like I had a friend in class in my in my college that was like, "Oh, I love this book, but I hate that guy because he's a homophobe." And I was like, "Is he?" I mean, I didn't even know who he was, you know. So, I think that what Ender's Game. Thank you, Ram Bam. It's Ender's Game. Um, I think that um, what I'm getting at is that that same elitism, that top down, agree with our politics, agree with our woke ideology. Otherwise, you're product your piece of artwork will not see the light of day that has been it has spread out from the visual world into film television um and video games now and it's the same it's the same shit so you all know this now you have to understand where this came from 
And you have to ask yourself, how much beauty did you miss out on because of these gatekeepers? How much have you missed out on? Because I bet it was a lot. So, anyway. And again, I'm not for censoring anybody. I think that, like, you know, this is why I don't like localization. Because it's about changing the original intention to suit your sensibilities. You know, this is the problem with that. Kind. It's, a, it's, it's not censorship. It's vandalism to me. So, uh, Orson Scott Card. Yes, that's right. Thank you. All right. Anyway, Allison, I'm sorry. Did you want to say anything to that? Okay, should I no, just play more? I think we should just play more. Let's get through this. Let's okay. do it. I care do about it. not not having Donald Trump in the White House, and I care about okay. having a <laughs> democratically controlled Senate and Congress that will make abortion the law of the land. And no, I don't care what other fallout happens from that. Yes, I'm happy with killing babies. I have a totally settled conscience about it. Don't pester me about that shit. Anyway, so let's get back on the... So, so he's okay with killing babies. Well, like I mean, he, he's not even... Future. He's not all he's not he's not even saying they're fetuses, which I guess I'll give him credit for that. But he's just okay with killing babies. And Yeah, but that that means that he might be okay with killing babies when they're they're outside the womb. At least He is okay with that. He is he is okay with that. Yeah. Are you this is so self destructive. It's like you just want to destroy yourselves. And this is like we're we're listening to one of the one of the beautiful ones in the mouse utopia he he thinks it's like an easy conclusion like not just an easy conclusion an obvious one. Oh yeah well obviously like why would you be against that <laughs> like, i think this is i think this is actually evidence of his autism because i've noticed autists can because they don't necessarily understand or or relate to like the moral stuff they can become so black and white in their morality mm -hmm. and so 100 like 110 percent driven towards a moral certainty that is this unholy like i'm pretty sure the inquisitors of the spanish revolution some of them were autistic Oof, sorry guys i yeah. am i am i am on the spectrum so i can because you can it, say that. Just, I can say that because you, there's such a, a level of pig-headed certainty in your conclusions that I see. And no, I, I, can, I can hear a certain Twitter commentator say, but Allison, no, I have never been certain about the things that I conclude. Even now, I have to remind myself, okay, where else would society come from but the relationship between men and women? Like it's not. It, I don't think it comes from the relationship between, uh, I don't know, the the pink gender, like the the vaguely pastel pink stripe. Yeah. And then the vaguely pastel blue stripe. I don't. Which which isn't male or female. It's something else entirely. You know. I don't think it comes from them. I don't think it comes from aliens. I don't think it comes from bears. I don't think it comes from plate tectonics. I'm pretty sure society comes from comes from men and women and the interaction between the two with an eye to actually being able to reproduce yep why else well this is a, this is also how i know he doesn't have kids or or a wife for that matter because you couldn't i don't think you could have that opinion that absolutely um but what do i know all right um see show so should I play more of this? Now there's other sections. Uh, I don't know what Great Indoors like if he wants to go through all of it or if he has specific bits he wants us to jump to. But there's later on there's an open dialogue about woke stuff in media and how we don't need jackbooted thugs, which I already read. I think that's where we're that'd be the next bit. Then there's Disneyism plus and capitalism at 1613. Not much to say about that except um, stop using the word capitalism. And then at 17 minutes, the good, the bad, and the ugly diversity. And then at 19 minutes, it says could be skipped. He talks about Soul, and he thinks his Soul was a great movie. I did not. I did not like that movie at all. I thought it was just lame. I didn't hate it. I wasn't mad because of the, well, the supposed diversity. I just didn't think it was a good movie. Um, then there's uh, 2040. He says Gamergate is a toxic dead brand because of bad optics. 
I don't give a shit about optics. I think caring about optics means caring about women's opinion. That's just me. And then at 2211, uh, the Satanic Temple and Legal Abortion. <laughs> Do what thou optics, wilt. Optics would have you completely, sen completely canceled, Jordan Owen. Yes. Like, you're going to care about things, then you have to live by the sword you choose to sharpen. Right? That means you are a misogynist and a se sexual harasser. That's it. That's the end. Because those are the optics. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, any of those sections you want to jump to, or let me see. I haven't let heard me take from Great Indoors if he doesn't say anything. I'm happy we clean babies. I got a super yeah, chow. I'm gonna read some super chows. Uh, Richard yeah. Vieira gives us five and says, "My favorite art troll was the teen who placed a pair of glasses on the floor in an art gallery <laughs> uh, while the public were discussing the deep meaning behind it." At the end of the day, one teen picked up the glasses and put them on and left the gallery. There wasn't even a card designating the glasses as an exhibit either. I got one that may be just as good, if not better. There was a real art piece. I've, I've talked about this before. It was a pile of rock candies in the corner of a room. It was a pile of little candies, like penny candies, fruit flavored, and people were encouraged to take one. And um, there was a story that my professor, my art teacher, I'll just say art teacher, I don't think it was a professor, he had to explain it to us so that we got the piece. He said that it was created by a guy whose um, lover, whose, whose husband or boyfriend, was uh, dying of AIDS, and the the pieces of candy represented his his lover slowly, like you know, degenerating till he was dead. And um, my, but the thing is, so he explained that. So, firstly, the the thing needed like a backstory in order to make sense. Secondly, he was saying that well, art now is not about what stuff that you can like take home and hang up on your wall, but it's all about like stuff that you go to a museum to experience. But then he said, there is one little problem with this is that in order for this piece to remain like relevant, you have to keep, they, they, at the end of every night, they refill the corner with candy. And it's like, well, so it's like his lover never dies because it doesn't, it doesn't actually end with all the candy going away. So, and it, it this wasn't like in some like small little indie gallery. This was in the, the museum of the art Institute of Chicago, like one of the biggest art galleries in the country it, it, like they have like van gogh in there and monet in there and like baroque gigantic baroque painting like beautiful paintings they got like what do you call those uh japanese prints like they got crazy stuff and a pile of candy um thank you for that richard pierre then gives us five bucks and says anyone remember how much of an insult it was to the men returning from vietnam to call them baby killers pepperidge farm remembers <laughs> when men do it, it's baby killing. It's murder. Uh, Zerex gives us five bucks and says, what Jordan said is what Bill Maher said on his show recently, almost word for word. Maher's, Ma Maher's not autistic. Piers Morgan was on and tried to shy away from that. And Maher, M Mayor, Mayor, Bill Mayer, Bill Maher, Bill Maher, yeah. And Maher confronted him on abortion is murder. I believe Piers has kids. Okay. All right. Thank now, you for that. I'm going to preface this by saying that I am pro-choice. Although the way that a lot of pro-choice people approach this disgusts me. Like, I think that it is a very, very difficult decision to make, right? And it should be the choice of the couple. Um, and the society should just just leave, stay out of it. But it is not something to celebrate. It's not mm -hmm. something to... I'll, Shout. I don't think that, yeah, I don't think it's something that it should, like, second trimester, I, I don't even think that it should be appropriate in the second trimester, right? Um, So it's like, this is, this is not something that should be public, it's not something that people should be talking about like this. Mm -hmm. It is a horrible thing. You know, it is a devastating thing, it should be. And this is this is this is not the way to approach it. Yep. Um, honestly, the more that pro-choice people act like this, are actually I think they're just anti-babies, anti-natal. The more I'm like I'm almost like I can well I can definitely see the the pro-life point of view. 
you know, and the funny thing is I was a lot more, I was a lot more, I don't know, I wouldn't want to say rapidly, but maybe more callously pro-choice Mm -hmm. um, before. And now I can't stand because there's billboards in, in the, in my province that say things like abortion is healthcare. I'm like, no, it's not healthcare. I'm not saying that it should be taken away as a choice. Yeah. It's not healthcare, right? It's, well, you can't, I don't think you can call yourself a libertarian and be unquestioningly pro choice because you have to like, you, you have to be concerned with the non aggression principle, which would mean that you have to be concerned about the, the, the most important rights that human beings have, which is a right to live. And that, and then you have to look at, you know, at the very least, entertain the possibility that it's important when, you know, a fetus, like when life begins. I mean, that, like, that, it, yeah. that's yeah, it. Like, you, know, that's, that's, yeah, you can't be a libertarian. Bad, yeah. You And the thing is, is that, like, it always, like, now the way that the discourse is, it, it's only women's choice. Like, it's only women's bodies that are affected. And I think that that mm -hmm. framing is, Part of the problem with this right well, because all of a sudden because... we were putting we we're putting women's like preferences over the like women's life suddenly becomes more important than even the child obviously not the man right that's already been excluded no uterus no opinion um unless of course you agree in which case then you're allowed to have an opinion yeah but, um, well, i mean like i said it's this very serious topic yeah, it's not something and that should be treated trivially. It's not something that should be treated glibly like this. And what I was mm -hmm. trying to get at is, you know, a while back, I didn't like the uh, the pro-life billboards that they had. And now I can't stand the pro, the pro well, the antenatal billboards. Yeah. Like, you know, it, there has to be something. Like, it, are, is there any other pro-choice people out here, like, just disgusted by how glibly it's treated? You know? I don't know. Um, and, Good question. And just... Is it possible to be pro-choice, but also be like, you know, life is sort of sacred. It's unfortunate that it comes down to these really hard choices sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, um, obviously there's certain aspects of life on Earth that are not ideal, shall we say. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that that's that's my opinion on that. And I, the, the glibness of this really disgusts me. It, it makes me want to to uh not associate with people like this yeah all right all right so so should i jump ahead to something else is there anything like based on these notes you want to get to we've been going for over two hours i don't know if you want to do the songs or like i don't you have well, to do um probably, the, the writing workshop or something to, we should probably try to finish this because this is a request i'm um, looking at the time codes uh okay so we're at three 1313 13. Mm -hmm. you know let's just go let's just blaze through this so just start playing right. and uh, right. i don't think we need to, to stop for the banana i'll try right. to keep right. my comments this actual minutes. sweet baby well this will be unlisted so ink scandal or thing okay the main reason that this is not gamergate 2 is because gamergate 1 was built around a scandal or at least a purported scandal. Now, to be very clear, I am not here to relitigate the validity of that scandal. If you write into me telling me how, uh, telling me how uh, wrong the people pushing, calling that a scandal are, or you write into me telling me how right that was to be a scandal one way or the other, I will delete and block you. We're not here to have that conversation. I'm just bringing this up for historical well, relevance. He has no opinion but it was on the fundamental aspects of Gamergate and why it started. But he definitely has opinions on Trump and abortion. I, I sense he he no. It's not that he doesn't have an opinion. It's that he doesn't want to hear our Other opinions. Opinion. Okay. Like okay. I, the I don't even know what he means by the scandal. Because if he means the Zoe Quinn thing again, that's not really the issue. And Gamergate two does revolve around a scandal when Cabrutus Rambo created his scene group, and um, people from within Sweet Baby Inc. We're calling for him to be banned from Steam and lose access to thousands of dollars worth of games, which he bought with his hard-earned cash as a Brazilian, which, by the way, and here's where the politics comes in, I'm, I'm unfortunate to say, um, his the Brazilian dollar is worth almost nothing 
because of the socialist government that came in under um, it, during an election that was pretty sketchy, and uh, he's now trying to move to Japan because he has to get out of his own country because it's going to shit. And he didn't want to lose thousands of dollars of his money that he earned, and they were trying to get him deplatformed along with everybody else that supported him. That's so kind of a bigger scandal than some bitch sucking five dicks. Yeah, that's true. And also, it's a less... Like, if you squint, you could maybe make the original Gamergate one or the the, the what, um, what uh, set it off to be misogynist or targeting a woman. I'm not saying it is, but at least it's more in the ballpark than what happened with Cabrutus and the situation now. Yeah. And okay, of course, so, they're called, they're doing the same. The, the journalists are doing the same time. So I'm I'm curious to see how he's going to characterize it. So let's keep going. All right, let's see. It was based around a uh, the whole thing, the whole original GamerGate launched because of a scandal, a purported scandal, namely that there was a female game developer that was purportedly sleeping with uh, a number of men within the gaming industry and games journalism that would uh, that could serve to benefit her career. Okay, that was the scandal. Now. That, on its face, yes, would be scandalous. That would be an example of ethical malfeasance. And again, we're not here to litigate whether or not it was. If you try to argue it one way or the other, I'm going to delete and block you. I don't care how long you've been on my channel. Anyway, the point being, that would be an example. That, that in and of itself, would be a description of something unethical. These companies hiring Sweet Baby Inc. to come in and spruce up their games with woke DEI crap, that's their prerogative. That's their initiative. If they want to, they're, they're right. If they want to bring that in, that's fine. And just as it's your right not to right, play those the games. Scandal, friend. Here's that's the not scandal. the scandal. That's not the scandal. The scandal is the censorship. Okay. The censorship Kabutis and the and the the desire to take away, essentially, to steal from Kabutis Rambo. That's what it is. To steal okay. his money. To punish him for mm -hmm. curating a list of all of the Sweet Baby Inc initiatives okay that's it that's the scandal is the censorship right that is the problem okay so i'm guessing he yep. doesn't recognize that he doesn't either he doesn't know it also which means he's ignorant and didn't look into it or he knows it and is being disingenuous also it's the people only way have a right to not buy it yes and to know what is in the things that they buy yes the, the, the thing is, the, the ultimate case for Gamergate 2 is, like, the most obvious one. It's like, I don't, like, you can have whatever opinion you want about what, how I choose to spend my money, but you can't change how I choose to spend my money. Like, that's it. Like, I've, I'm not supporting you, and that's it. Like, and that, and they, they don't know what to do with that, because, you see, they don't believe in property rights. They don't. They believe this is why these people only get involved with the largest and most popular IPs, like whatever it is, whether it's in film or whatever, because they think that we're sheep and we'll just buy whatever they put because it has our brand on it. And we are hopefully making a conscious choice to say, no, that's not the brand that I fell in love with. You're wearing a skin suit. I'm not going to support that. And they get mad because they can't control what I buy. Now, of course, if they take over everything, then they're, 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 the logic is, well, now you can't escape it, right? But we can just choose not to do it at all, which is what I'm doing for the next two years. I will not give them a cent. And I'll, I don't care if the whole thing burns down. And they're actually losing their minds right now. They're like, oh, my God, so many like studios are like having to cut jobs and people are getting fired. And it's like, well, okay. I mean, you asked for it. The last thing you should do as somebody who produces anything is insult the fucking customers. So that, I mean, this is literally just the way that property works, guys. That's a, that's it. Like, it's, you know, what? every time I go to Food Lion instead of Kroger, I discriminate. And I have a right to do that. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's so obvious. The, these the people are like, you can't really do that. The thing is really interesting about all of this is that there is a collusion between government and corporation that's going on, and the end result is forced consumption. Have you noticed mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, it's not just not respecting property rights. It's that you will be forced to spend money on what is acceptable, and you will be forced to consume what we decide 
So, for example, recently there was this collusion between government and corporations in which the corporations decided whether or not a particular product was going into your bloodstream. Yeah. And you did not, and they did put all kinds of pressure, especially in Canada, to take away your right to say, no, I am not going to be forced to consume this product. And I remember, I remember talking to the quote unquote, and you know what? I don't even think they're, they're leftists anymore. They're corporatists. I remember talking to the corporatists like this one on uh, Twitter. And I said, okay, fair enough. You know, there, there is a, uh, a worldwide emergency, medical emergency, and you feel like the, the consumption of this product will save people's lives. Well, I feel like this is a moral hazard if we allow corporations to profit off of off of forced consumption so it's fine if you want everybody to be forced to consume this product but corporations who produce it should make no profit on that and they were they were like and, and this was this was an alleged like they call themselves a communist or a leftist but as soon as i said that they were like but, but, but corporations should profit they should like the, this is a, the perfect place where corporations should profit the corporations should profit on forced consumption, on government forced consumption. Okay, that's not a leftist. That's not even a communist. It is a fucking corporatist or corporatist communist, whatever the hell you want to call mm -hmm. it. But they, they do not believe in personal choice. Leftists are statists. It. Statists don't believe in choice. Yeah, fine. We the, need to call them the, statists. I'm just saying, whatever they're statists. They yeah, they're statists. Like, state, like communists are statists. Leftists are statists. The merger of corporations and government is fascism. It's all the same. It's all leftism. That's what I'm saying. That's what I've been saying for years. Leftism is statism. These people are statists. The state is good when it benefits them, when it supports what they believe. This guy is okay with the state taking away our ability to vote because he doesn't like insert who politician. Yeah, so yeah, it, all comes it doesn't even matter who it is. It's just the removal yeah. of other people's choice. Yeah, so that's what they he want. He totally supports this individual. Totally supported massive corporate products or profits from forced consumption. Now, mm -hmm. what the hell is he getting out of that? And I, I'm like, the thing is that I have always been, like, I guess a classical liberal. When I see that, I'm like, yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. And at the very least, people should have the protection that if a corporation gets some kind of collusion with government and forced consumption is the result, that people that they should not make any profit off of that none whatsoever in fact they should lose money they mm -hmm. should lose money for doing that yeah that, well let's that think about corporations to ensure that the future isn't forced consumption yeah like well that's the thing about corporations consume corporate product they that's the thing about corporations they are not a product of the free market because they are they are in bed with the government that's what makes them corporations the fact that we recognize a corporation as an as a an individual, like the, the entity itself, is essentially the justification for the government to support it like an individual, like welfare, you know, recipient. So that means it is not a product of a free market. And that is why you can have like, you know, corporations acting as uh, businesses in the same way yeah. that the that Ukraine created its own state church to replace the actual church. Because now okay. it's under the control of the state. All right, let me let me just point this out. If you are for forced consumption, you, maybe you call it an, a, a statist, whatever, that is abhorrent. Yeah, it is. You are taking away, like it is an abhorrent position to have. And this is this is this is the real scandal of Cabrutus. Like the 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 scandal of Gar Gamergate one. You can find cracks in it, I guess, and really insert. You can't with this one because this is a scandal of forced consumption. And it really, mm -hmm. it really illustrates the mentality of the people who are trying to force consumption. And yeah. it's like that we have gone from a consumer-based society to a forced consumption-based society where we will be forced. Oh, that's what they want. Yeah, that's what they we want. We will be forced to consume. Mm -hmm. And it's, it or, is, uh, yeah, go ahead. It is actually terrifying. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, That's what they is, want. It's, is, it, okay, let's play some more. 
So yeah. it's not a it's it's not a response to some great scandal. It's maybe it, yes, it's something you don't like, but as far as ethics, they're com they're completely it's completely within their right to bring to bring people in and do and do stuff like that to their games. That's their decision and their call. For so, such a deceitful man. Yeah, but it's our decision not to buy it. That's all this is. Like you can say that till the cows come home. But first of all, I don't have to buy it. That's my right. Second of all, I can also complain about it. That's also my right. Freedom of speech and property rights. That's all this comes down to. You have no leg to stand on. I don't even know what you're, you're just, oh, this isn't a scandal. Like, they have a right to do that. Yeah, we know. Nobody's saying they shouldn't have a right to do that. Nobody. Okay. Nobody's okay. saying, oh, okay. Let me just play some more. No, no, no. It's yeah, not. No, no, no. What, what? I'm so, I was apologizing because I was getting yippy. Um, oh. Yeah, and, like, this guy is deceitful. Um, yeah. But if this is intentional. Because the scandal is that this is forced consumption, but, but I was just thinking about this. Like this is the vehicle they're using to implement the structure of forced consumption. Like, yes. They they they, ta they give they give a um like a what is the word what is the right word um they they I don't, hand wave is not the right word but they give like lip service lip service all of this all of these moral causes. But they are yeah. just using these moral causes as a vehicle to force consumption on people. That's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're using these moral causes to also hijack gaming in order to continue to, I don't know, construct the new man, the N-U-M-A-N. Mm -hmm. You know, that they're going to turn, that they well, literally want to turn gaming it into a platform to propagandize men. Yeah, put it in a different, another context. It's maybe yeah, a bit that. more. Like, everybody's like, this... oh, but that's a conspiracy theory, gals. And they literally say that. Yes, they do. Put it in another context. What else are they, or are people starting, like government starting to force on people? They're trying to force them to buy electric vehicles. They're trying to force them to, um, like, you know, limit their energy consumption for whatever reason. They're creating these 15 minute cities. Like, the, or is that what they're called? 15 minute cities? So, th this isn't just happening like in some hobby. Like, this is like if you see the pattern there, or you see it everywhere, and you realize that this isn't just happening where it, if it's happening where it doesn't seem to matter, it's definitely happening where it really matters. You know, there are, you know, there are, there are already 15 minute cities. They're called towns. If you want <laughs> to get around in 15 minutes, move to one. Yeah. In fact, you I could, but see, that's around. the. Yeah, I could get around almost everywhere in like five minutes. Mm hmm. Like it's, well, this can. is ridiculous. You gotta have well, a car to live can. here. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we're <laughs> lucky we don't. Well, I when don't I lived in Chicago, I could walk everywhere, and it didn't I mean, have fifteen minutes. Part of the cities, year, but... you sort of need skis to get around, but you know, mm -hmm. it's 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 still like if you want to live in a fifteen-minute city, go move to a town. Yeah. Right. Like. Don't try to rework the entire world because of your utopian vision. But I guess townspeople are give give these people the ick. They do. Ugh. They do. That's okay. right. Rural people are the are are the, the ick, ick because they believe in demonic possession instead of mental health. I thought you knew that. All right, let's play some more. Not a scandal. It's not scandalous. But the thing you have to understand is this is our, you're not in the same place you were 10 years ago with the original Gamergate. This whole thing of everybody being sick and tired of woke crap being, uh, being imposed on entertainment media, everybody's, are, we're already talking about, there's an open dialogue. It's not controversial to have this dialogue anymore. There is an open dialogue about how tired people are of this stuff. You're not an under you're not an unrepresented minority that uh, the media that the media sphere at large is trying to force out of the discussion altogether. You're part of the discussion now. You don't need to act. You don't need to act like a bunch of jackbooted thugs to uh, kicking doors open this time. What are you talking about, jackbooted thugs? Like Let's, you mean well, okay? So consumption. So oh, yeah, right. Yeah, because we're basically saying you know. I don't want to pay Amazon Prime to watch a shitty, like, fucking dollar store version of Lord of the Rings called The Rings of Power. 
and here are all the reasons why. It's basically a feminist like fever dream, and I'm just not interested because that's not what J.R.R. Tolkien and his son work so hard to protect. I don't want to give that money. Why are you being a jackbooted thug? I don't like the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I think it's shit. Why are you being a jackbooted hey, thug? I'm just not supporting it this anymore. Man's face is punchable in Minecraft. Oh, very. And very it is. in Minecraft, it's, it's yeah. So, in Minecraft, in, of course. In uh in um in Roblox. In the real world, Oof. I only wish to to put a, a flower <laughs> a laurel of flowers upon his head. But in Minecraft, yeah. my desires are entirely <laughs> different. Uh I have something for that. Hold on a second. Do I have the Minecraft thing? Um, okay. Let's not do that, though. Okay, let's play some more. You're part of the discussion, and this discussion's already happening on much larger levels than the gaming industry. For the record, though, that's true. We can talk about whatever we want, but the fan base, the people who have criticisms, are being dragged over the coals by the media, and we're not just being disagreed with respectfully. Like, they're calling us, like, racists and sexists and incels and all the usual things and if we like take it's issue with tough. that yeah if we take issue with that like are you saying this is like a, a level playing field of of uh good faith actors because i have i have a bridge in baltimore that i'd like to sell you <laughs> Disney you'll see itself. like Look everybody the who has these attitudes like the, huh? everybody who has these attitudes ultimately is supporting corporations forcing consumption then that's the ultimate, and, and I'm like, I, I, like I said, like, how is this, this is the connection, guys. Like, that mm -hmm. corporations want to force you to consume. Like, and again, corporations are really government instruments at this point. They are. There's a huge collusion between the two. But they want to force people to choose, or to have no choice when it comes to their consumption. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this guy, like, he is a stooge of that. Absolutely. And he and they use this whole narrative, this whole intersectional narrative to push this. And it's just, it's like really fascinating how it all lands on yeah, corporations I have to wonder should have the right doing to, it for. Yeah, corporations should have the right to force consumption on people. That this mm -hmm. is legitimate. And they should you have know, the right I, I wonder, to to essentially rig elections. Like what Something something just, occurred to me. Like this is this big niggling in the back of my head that it probably is going to take a while to erupt properly, but this really is, like, it feels like the people who buy into this, again, nothing to do with the actual, the actual things that they say that they're for, but it has to do with the idea of taking away other people's choice because they don't, they don't, they suspect that other people's choice is wrong or there's just yeah. a thrill in being able to compel other people to do things like the authoritarianism becomes addictive oh it is power is power is a is a drug more and of course uh, stronger you, you than you cocaine yourself, or heroin yeah when you align yourself with the power base you get to enforce that power onto others which really right. belies the like they call themselves leftists they call themselves liberal well you know aren't no. aren't isn't the left or whatever whatever virtue is supposed to be isn't it about liberty because this no. is the exact opposite you well you, it's you, you live long enough to become the villain i suppose no it, it's like it, i think it's okay they would say it's liberty or freedom but i think it's a feminine version of it where it's freedom from uh, not freedom from but freedom to things uh which usually comes at the expense Fear. of somebody else yeah, it's like, what, what is it when you ask feminists, like, what rights do you not have that men have? And they will say things like the right to be able to walk around in the middle of the night without Freedom being Freedom from fear. Right. They want to be free from fear. But what they want is security, which always it's comes at the expense of somebody else. So they're not really interested in freedom at all. And But they mistake it for that. And I think that, I look, I don't think this is true of liberals. But again, liberals are not leftists. And these things are conflated, and liberals tend to be, they don't have a mechanism. Anymore, really. No, no, no. Li liberals don't have a mechanism to halt, To they don't have a line to draw when it comes to their 
tolerance because liberals, their one flaw is that tolerance is the highest virtue for them. So they tolerate everything because it's the thing that good people do and they tolerate it to their own self-destruction because they don't have a line unless they find a line. But when they do, then they get accused of being conservatives. So this is why for me, liberalism and conservatism are not useful terms because everybody has a line and you have to draw it somewhere and the and leftists they they delight in hanging around or you know associating themselves with liberals because liberals put up with them because liberals think that tolerance is the highest virtue and um this brings in like i, just, I was like carl popper did a whole thing uh, he has like a bit about the um the the the, the paradox of tolerance but go ahead Allison. And you what? Well, what I was going to say was um, I think that there's ways to draw these lines that are consistent both with Christian ethics and liberalism. I, I won't get into that. Um, but honestly, what I'm seeing now is basically uh, authoritarian corporatism and uh, forced consumption. And mm -hmm. it, it has it, the, the delivering mechanism, the sled that this shit came in on was intersectionality. But that's the payload. Yeah. And as soon as they get all of that implemented, they they're probably going to throw the shed away, the, the sled well, they, away. Yeah, they want to manage democracy. <laughs> yep. Okay, they want to manage democracy like literally hell divers too, manage democracy. All right, let's play. Okay, let's incredible keep going. the incredible unbelievable negative backlash to uh woke snow white as people are calling it or woke snow white woke little mermaid disney is losing massive amounts of money the one of the if not the biggest entertainment companies in the world is losing massive amounts of money and yeah but it's only because we are talking about it and acting on it so like what do you like do you want us to stop talking about it i don't understand what this argument is okay that is uh and and they're losing money and they're having to reevaluate uh whether or not they want to do this one uh one you know woke infused project after another goes belly up this and already people are openly having this discussion openly having this dialogue now, he, here I have to jump in and say, because inevitably someone's going to say, well, what's wrong with having more diverse inclusion of people, blah, 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 blah. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with uh, diversity, uh, a diverse people, a diverse group of people appearing in a creative project. There's of course not. Also, there's nothing wrong with a project that's all white people. I'll say it. There's no. nothing wrong with a project that's all white heterosexual you know, I have men. I a good problem with my own story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I, I war stories. Like they're gonna be almost all white heterosexual men, or at least the sexuality won't be very forefront. Um, but the um, the thing is that um, you know, we've had diversity. Now you go back and look at stuff that's put out in the fifties, and people t are so ignorant about the past. You just look at movies in the 50s you get more of a sense of the culture and the lies that have been said about it like diversity was actually a almost like a principle in the 50s i mean it really has been since like um you know americans all went to war well, they're they're lying to us about history that's why they're lying to us yeah. about history yeah but they are obviously. this idea that like, humans are or have dignity as a result to their relationship with a god that recognizes them all as equal is the source of our beliefs about diversity. It's a Christian principle. It's why Christians were the first to oppose slavery. Because yep. slavery is antithetical to the idea that men, everybody, men and women, black, white, every race is equal in God. Hmm. Right? Well, people That's, have been, that people is, have been, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. That is where it started, you know? Yep. And, uh, it, and even the statement, the meek shall inherit the earth. You can see the genesis of we are concerned about minorities and the majority's effect on minorities, right? This all this is all a, this is all a part of Christian ethics, right? And yeah. it's it's just where was I going with this? It is something um, that is embedded in our culture deeply. It's why this culture 
was the one that got rid of slavery. Mm -hmm. Christian culture was the one that got rid of slavery. I think people need to understand that. Christian ethics are incompatible with slavery. Yeah. It is. Well, yeah, they, they, were the, the, they were the first ones to end it. All right, let's continue. There's nothing wrong with that at all. The problem, to be perfectly blunt about it, is every time, oh, every time people turn on, uh, you know, they, they turn on the, the new remake or the new adaptation and, oh, look, all of the redheaded white people have been replaced by, have been, are now being portrayed by black uh, actors and, oh, look, the beautiful woman is now a plain Jane heavy set woman and so on and so forth. Every time, and, and oh, look, a, a gay couple is engaged in a plot line that would only make sense if a heterosexual couple was doing it. Read my commentary on the novel Winter's Orbit, for example, exa or watch my commentary on the novel Winter's Orbit for an example of what I'm talking about there. But anyway, these, uh, this, uh, all of that becomes annoying. And the reason it becomes annoying is because to be perfectly frank about it, uh, everyone, uh, you know, everyone that has a problem with this has a problem with it because they know that the underlying message is, hey, the people who made this think you're an asshole. And this is being done to remind you that you're an asshole. And people don't like that. And even if that I'm pausing it there, I don't know if it's yeah, he's not saying anything objectionable. Out. He's no, How nothing he objectionable think? except like. The other thing is, is that the well, the other thing about the this 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 stuff being injected is that first of all, it it they act like we're stupid, like we don't know they're doing this on purpose, and that we're not that you know what I mean. Like there is like a there is like a serious condescension that's happening where they're like, yep. here's Little Mermaid and she's black, and now it's like now you have to see that, and you're like, well, we know that that's not correct. And when people want an adaptation, if people, it's not a good movie, no. Because the other problem is, is that they're usually doing that to compensate for poor writing or creative decisions in other areas. And this is their way of shielding themselves from criticism. So if you say, well, this, this, you know, product is bad because of these other reasons, they'll say, no, you're just racist because we, it's like the... The, the diversity injection is actually a landmine. And if you try to address, even if you say, look, it's got nothing to do with that, they don't care about that. They will use it against you. They have done it. I have seen it countless times. There is no amount of rationality you can bring to the table that will change their perspective because they have their mindset on doing this. Another problem with this stuff too is that a lot of the times these characters are self-inserts. They are put in there by narcissists that can only see themselves. So when they talk about representation, they don't actually mean representation of a certain class of person. They mean they want to put themselves in something. And it's usually women, and I don't know why that is, but it just so happens to be the case. Kim Belair has tons of self-inserts. She is the, the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. And if you look at the products that she's involved with, they all have like female protagonists that look a lot like her have hair similar to hers and it's really obvious and they're not well written there's not a lot going on so now we have this strange like self insert can you imagine if i like said hey I, hey guys i just made a whole bunch of like new drawings and i send them out and they're just pictures of me like do do people really want that <laughs> i don't want that i <laughs> like i but but this is what they do so that's well, the issue is not just that this stuff is calling you an asshole, although that's the defense if you try to, like, criticize it. The issue is that the product isn't good. Yeah, and one of the other reasons is because they're replacing meritocracy in which you recognize audience input as the determinator, determina determination of whether or not what you're doing is good. I mean, you can say, this is not my audience, that's fine. But somebody has to be your audience. And the, the sales mm -hmm. numbers show that what you're putting out is you don't have an audience for it. But regardless, they changed the merit, the, the, the metric from finding an audience and making something that that audience is enjoyable by the audience that is, you know, like the, you find. Because like again, you know, there are some artists that don't have a large audience, but they're still constructing something with merit 
because it's authentic it's it's like a, it's got a it has a strong voice whatever and it it finds its audience so that's the other thing yeah. if you are if you are niche you allow yourself to find your audience you don't demand people be your audience right you let it let it yes. find its audience yes you okay? have like well that's this the thing the they 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 want to create markets but you can't create markets you have to respond to markets or, you know, I mean, sometimes there's Sometimes, absolutely... yes. If you get really lucky, you could, like, find that there you make something and everyone's drawn to it. But a lot of the but, time you but, can't say, I'm going to make this thing and you have to buy it. Yeah, they, they're like, again, that's forced consumption. But my point is that sometimes mm -hmm. you have art that doesn't find its market until the artist is dead. Like, yeah. But you can't Bango. force it. And, yeah. um, but, but my point is that, and, it, and he was expressing, you know, something fundamental inside himself. He's authentic to his experience or something, but and that and he eventually found his market. Unfortunately, not before he went nuts. Uh, but um, well, yeah. But my he was recognized well after he died. This go ahead. This is what they're trying to do: is they're replacing the merit of being authentic, of telling something that that evokes the human truth. They're replacing that, or even just something that people enjoy. Right. Yeah. They're replacing that, that that metric with intersectionality. And when you replace that metric with intersectionality, you produce mostly crap. Yep. You know, it's just it's just the way it is. Um and uh and then Nikki, then they defend the crap by by what you're saying. You're an asshole if you don't like it. It's because you you dislike uh but here's the thing, like the intersectionality narrative also makes poor characters because well, yeah, it, it does. doesn't have that kind of interest in the inner life of characters. That's what yeah. fascinates people about stories. You know, you can have stories about heroic deeds and all this other stuff, but for the most part, a modern audience, at least a modern audience in the West, wants to know what makes people tick inside them they want to know the causal factors inside a person it's like it's like yeah. the difference between like f older forms of storytelling in the west other forms of storytelling around the world the western focus and i'm not saying it's bad or good the western focus is on causal agents inside the person we're fascinated by that we want to know how people tick and i'm sure that's true in other places it's just pr presented differently okay this is something that is antithetical to intersectionality because intersectionality says your primary characteristic is your appearance. <laughs> Basically, mm -hmm. what you appear well, yeah, at. sure. Your well, your your um, immutable characteristics. You know, yeah, your sexual they, they, orientation, they, your they gender. They your... ignore that internal causal. And, you know, when I'm we, when we've been watching older movies. It's fascinating to see how well older storytellers understood how people work. Mhm. Mm like it, they make well, it yeah, fascinating. Well, yeah, people want they people want a human experience. And the funny thing yeah. is is that today um when you get a really good product, it usually does feature a heterosexual white man because there is no like they don't they don't consider them to be special. So they just have to write them as human, and they end up being better. I mean, I've, I've, they do. They end up being better characters because they they you don't you can't do anything with the intersectionality unless they make them into two dimensional you know villains of villains. some kind that represent. Well, even yeah, as but, villains, they're better characters. Yeah, they, they can be internal causation to male yeah. characters. Yeah, they they are but that's what... way because of things that they choose, as opposed to diversity characters, which only ever respond to the actions of male characters. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like they are the way they are because some male character, some heterosexual white male character chose that for them at some point in their past. Have you not noticed that? Like, that's the framework. Yeah, yeah for sure. All right, let me play okay. this 30 seconds. That's not your intention. Yeah. That's what's coming across. And so that's, that's the reality of where we're at now. 
But the thing is, there's, is there anything wrong with having gay characters, having, uh, you know, having gay characters, having heavily involved female characters, having black actors on screen and everything else? No, nothing wrong with that at all. The problem is when they, uh, the problem is when people, uh, activist creatives use these minorities to smack people in the face. Uh, I think that was the end of that section. So I'm going to jump ahead because he talks about soul and uh basically talks about how it's a really good movie and it's a good example of how to do this right i personally didn't like soul like i said um do you remember that movie i was in the pixar one but the guy who he goes yeah to i remember it I, I thought it was really yeah. bland like i lost yeah. interest about five minutes in because i i had a sense well, of where it was going yeah it just wasn't it was very forgettable and again nothing to do with the race it just wasn't i didn't even think of it as a black movie honestly because it was about ghosts so I, you know, I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, I didn't think it was all that great. Did it do well? Probably. I mean, it was Pixar and like at the time Pixar could do no wrong, but, um, I didn't yeah, really care for I, it. I, I, so. like I said, I just, I didn't get a sense of a, like a strong sense of, you know it what it was? I didn't really get a strong sense that the character was being challenged. Yeah. It didn't really, it didn't really stick with me. You know, you can usually tell like if a, if a movie is good. Oh, Even if it's a children's it movie. Okay. Here's what it is. Here, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, just let me say. When I was talking before about that book, and I, incidentally, I, I sent the, the title of the book. Like, it was a book on writing. Somebody asked me in our Discord, which is at feed the, or badgerednation.online, if you guys want to take part, but you have to get a subscription. Someone had asked me what book it was. So I'm going to tell you what the book was uh, in my little Ask Allison channel. The book is... Elements of fiction writing seen in structure. But what I wanted to say is that what hooks people is when you present a character and then you show that character experiencing something that fundamentally breaks their sense of identity. So whatever they base their sense of self-worth on, you challenge that and you hit it hard right? And then that makes people stand up and take notice. And you can do that with white men, white heterosexual men, because they're not supposed to take an identity from their appearance. But everybody yeah. else in the, intersectional, um, in the intersectional framework takes an identity from how they appear. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that unless you turn them into right, a Right, because they can't, you man. can't challenge them. Exactly. So you can't that's, challenge them. That's why they're that's why they're stuck being uninteresting because ultimately their identity descriptors their identity, are the most important aspect and it's supposed to be untouched. And it's shallow. It's the most mm -hmm. shallow identity descriptors you could possibly ask True. for. It's just, oh, my skin color is this. Oh, my sexuality is this. Oh, my gender is this. Oh, mm -hmm. my ethnicity is this. Oh, my religion. It's all so, well, I mean, religion actually might, and ethnicity, we might actually get something interesting out of, but all the rest of it, shallow, shallow. Mm -hmm. And how do you challenge that identity? And that is their ultimate identity. They can't identify as the best secretary because their ultimate identity is intersectional slot number 816B. Mm -hmm. You know, intersectional slot number THX380. You know, intersectional slot this that's their identity so you can't challenge that because it's unchallengeable the nature of intersectionality is that your identity cannot be challenged right that it exists and it is immutable and so how do you construct a decent story from that the answer is you don't so it's all shit mm -hmm. okay let's go right. but Sorry, last and not funny. least the reason you don't need to be you don't need it to be gamergate 2 is because whether you believed in gamergate or not Gamergate is a fundamentally toxic, dead brand. I used to, for about 10 years of my life, I uh, wrote corporate ad copy and worked in brand marketing. And, you know, all of the, the fine, you know, the, the, uh, the descriptive fine print you read on advertisements and things like that, that, that was the kind of thing I wrote. Ghost wrote it freelance. And if I was, if, if my team and the team I was a part of and I, uh, the consultancy team I was a part of had been brought in on this, we would never say, 
call it Gamergate. Gamergate is a toxic brand. You cannot, it's a dead brand and it's a toxic brand. You cannot resurrect this brand. But it, but it's here and it's not a brand yeah. per se. Yeah. It's, it's, and a, this is so corporal speak. I know. Well, he is a, he used to write copy for corporations. So that explains it. But, um, yeah, I mean, what do you mean by toxic? I mean, is he just going to call it toxic and not like explain how and who gives a shit? Like, why do like, who are the people calling Gamergate toxic? People Alyssa Mercante, the, the sex worker turned fucking journalist for Kotaku. Why do, why do I fucking care what she thinks? Like, why does anybody care? That's where it starts, guys. Like, you have to stop giving a fuck what these people think. These people hate you. If they hate you, why do you, why do you want to appeal to them? You just, you don't have to hate them back. But you can just be like, fuck off. You know, my money, my choice. Remember that? I mean, it's just... In your general <laughs> direction. It, it's, yeah, it's so... I mean, like, I don't know what to do with this. It's toxic, dude. So do you want to be seen as toxic? I already am. It's in the fucking American Psychological Association decided that I'm toxic. Why, why do I give a fuck what you think? Guy in your bedroom? Or what is that, like a broom closet? Like, what, what, like I don't give a fuck. You, you can't you can't do it it's it's dead you need to call it something else it would be like calling it the the um, uh, you know it, call resurrecting gamergate as a brand would be like saying we're gonna have a brand that's called blood leaching thalidomide lobotomy like it's it, these are words Sounds you don't want to bring into any anything that's going to inspire yeah because if you don't call it gamergate they might listen to you if you rebrand it then maybe the the journalists and the uh, and sure, the Caputus the, the was, consulting uh, firms and all that. No, no, he didn't call it Gamergate. He just said Sweet Baby Ink Detected. That was his space. We didn't call yeah, it Gamergate until after that blew up. Yeah, and that was only because the Gamergaters who had been through this rodeo before started to stand up for him. So it's like, uh, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're like honestly. It doesn't. I think that. Media, mainstream media, probably including Daily Wire and all of the like the mainstream right outlets. I think it's all toxic. Does my attitude count? Like, yeah. if I call the rest of the world toxic, does that mean the rest of the world has a branding problem? You know what this reminds me of, Allison? This reminds me of, this is how stupid it is, by the way. Back when we started doing this, there were people in on that were sort of doing this in terms of like doing the men's rights content on youtube there were people who agreed with us on like everything but but wanted us to change our branding and not call ourselves mras because they said that the label mra is essentially poisoned and that we should like call it something else and that was a suggestion that was happening back then from people like carl benjamin for example and Mike, our Mike, Dr. Ranricam, he made a video about it. And I mean, the general consensus was that doing, being a men's rights advocate is not an identity. It is an action. It is a verb that you define by our actions. And you can call it whatever you want. Like I said, like men's rights activists, it doesn't matter what we call ourselves. I, I prefer men's rights advocate only because I think it's more precise, not because I fear the term men's rights activist. But this is the same exact argument. Do the thing you're doing, just don't call it Gamergate 2 because that has a stink on it. Well, why does it have a stink on it? Well, because the journalists put a stink on it. So if we come up with something new, could the journalists put a stink on that? Well, yes, of course they could. Right? I mean, yeah. they already do that. Like, what... What is the term term du jour to refer to us now? It's not men's rights activists, although sometimes that gets used. What is it instead? Well, it's the manosphere. It's incels. It's Andrew Tate people. It's whatever, right? It's the uh, the red pill bros, whatever it is. And everyone uses it, and they do it as a, a kind of pejorative, and there's nothing we can do about it except just, you know, Badger on, Do as we've on. been doing, right? Because there's no point in in dealing with that. Like I don't, I don't fucking care about branding, and and anybody worth, 
Uh, honestly, anybody worth their salt. I mean, I do some branding for the show. That's why there's cartoon avatars. But anybody worth their salt should know that um, your branding is not as important as your actions. Like, if you care about the truth, then you will seek the truth. And if you seek the truth in earnest, then you will find that we are not what the media says we are. But only people willing to do that work are, are going to, you know, come to those conclusions. So go ahead, Allison. Okay, well, all right. A couple things. Uh, a, a toxic brand is better than no brand, and that's really what this comes down to. The people who constantly supposedly frame all of these brands as toxic want you to abandon a clear identifier, right? Because if you have a clear identifier, people can find you. If you are constantly trying to play the game of, oh, well, this, this, this name is now toxic because my enemy has said so. I better find a new name. You essentially, you, you essentially engage in entropy, and the, the destruction of your own identifiability. So it's ridiculous. Don't even play the game. You, not, you can't win. You cannot win. All you can do no. is say, I am what I am. We seek truth. Let the, the chips fall where they may. This is right, who exactly. I am. This is what I represent. Now, what I wanted to say is, yeah, there were other brands throughout history that were considered toxic. For example, the Roman Empire considered Christianity to be toxic. How'd that go for it, them? You know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm a Roma boo. Like, I love the Roman Empire. And Rome eventually was conquered by Christianity, which was interesting. But, you know, it's like things that are considered toxic are often not and are, are in fact reactions to something that is toxic right mm -hmm. this is gamergate considered toxic it is a reaction to forced consumption okay yeah it is a reaction to forced consumption which is profoundly toxic and incidentally you who thinks that you should sacrifice democracy because there's a politician you don't like you are toxic oh absolutely i think that's right. way more toxic than you know okay let's finish inspire confidence or inspire uh legitimacy or anything like that so whether you believed in gamergate or not it's a inspire dead brand and who? bringing it up is only going to make you look worse what like he's saying it's toxic to who people who want like he's the well no but only you, the people dude, who oppose you us would be, you would be you would be somebody who'd be like Okay, the, 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 um, I don't know, the, um, the Brants down the street in, uh, in, oh, what's a German city? I'm blanking. I don't know, Germanville. They're, they seem to be harboring somebody in their attic. And you would be like, that's toxic. Yeah. <laughs> that's toxic. Like you would be a jackboot in Germany. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like, like literally, like you, you would be the person who'd be like, "Oh yeah, well, you know, the Jews, the 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 orange people, they're bad. So everything that we do to get their influence out of our society is good. And you know why you'd be a jackboot? Because fascism starts with identifying an enemy. Hmm? Right? I don't even see Biden as the enemy. I I don't know if he's conscious enough to be an enemy of anyone, honestly. But um, but you know it's like this is this is the problem. And I know you're sighing because you're like, oh, but we need you know, I'm too tolerant. But I know <laughs> that 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 the discourse stops when we identify enemies rather than behaviors. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously, but think about it yeah, this okay. way. You know, the 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 so-called the Temple of Satan uh or the Satanic Temple made a lot of uh a lot of noise recently by trying to say that abortion access should be protected because they have a sacred ritual called the uh it was like the Satanic Abortion Ritual or something like that. And so they were trying to get le secure legal access to abortion on the basis of that. It's like, dude, no, it, no, you're not helping. You're not helping. I don't think you understand that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, what I if they really believe it? Lecture. What if they, what I mean, if it's like a real. We have to lecture like him real... about this, the church of Satanism. 
The Church of Satanism is, as far as I know, ironic. So they're essentially saying that our, our religious freedom requires the recognition of abortion. And honestly, if they were saying that and they were like, yeah, just like circumcision. <laughs> like that, yeah. that actually would be pretty damn based, in my opinion. You mean like banning um, circumcision? No, like saying um, I should have the ultimate right to choose what happens to my child's body because I am a religious group. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm but they're at. but yeah. they don't care about circumcision because the, yeah, the Church not. of Satan is is largely feminist. I mean, they use it as yeah. a tool, but they serve women. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, and if they because they think they're just giving it to the Christians by existing, but that's like the whole that's the premise of the whole thing. Like, I mean, I know they think of themselves as ironic, but they're like unironically doing the work of Satan. I mean, they, they don't, but they don't believe in Satan. So to them, it's not happening. So it's weird because it's, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get too metaphysical here, but they are in fact, yeah, let's, let's finish it. Doing that. No, I mean, so. I, you know, I, the church of Satan is probably like, There's I only about, um, yeah, I actually have read Anton LaVey's book. Mm -hmm. And a while back, like, I was never really a Satanist, although I was interested in learning about, like, occult stuff. Um, yeah. Not necessarily because I believed it, but just because I found uh, religious practices fascinating. And his book is pretty, pretty milk toast. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, do what thou just, wilt. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. And then he, he mm -hmm. wills things like he's like, I want you to die in Minecraft. And I'm like, OK, you, you, you're pretty. I don't think that anybody should necessarily find him that threatening. Maybe he, they are doing the work of Satan. I think they're just doing the work of cringe myself, but whatever. Essentially, to do... To, to, okay, let me just play the rest. Of it. Like 15 uh, seconds. You, you already have the right wing that's anti-abortion already... Uh, the, the right wing that's anti-abortion is already calling this satanic, and you're going to show up and validate what they're saying? No, your brand is too toxic. Stay away. That's like okay, the end of the of the things isn't that he Trump like pro choice to a certain degree. He believes in I mean ultimately he believes in states rights. That was like the most the most recent thing he said that was considered really controversial. He's like, "Well, I'm going to leave it to the state." He just look, the thing about Roe v. Wade and like this is just not debatable. This is just a fact. It was bad law. It should never have existed. Even the woman Roe herself was like, "Yeah, that was like she lied about like the rape that caused her to get pregnant. That was the premise for the whole Roe v. Wade thing. She like, it was, it was based on a false allegation to begin with. It was bad law. And it finally was overturned because it was bad law. But after that, Trump didn't say I'm banning abortion everywhere. He said, we're going to leave it to the States. And that's what they did. Or that's what he wanted for it. Okay. So well, I, that, I'm, I'm that's, looking at the latest I mean, controversy. Apparently he has distanced himself from the ban on late term abortions. Wow, Trump is yeah. more pro-choice oh, no. than I am. What a fascist. Oh, my God. Yeah. My God. Well, of like, course. But seriously, he's more pro-choice than I am. All mm -hmm. right. Well, what? how does this guy square that that particular circle? Like He's the orange Trump, man. He doesn't care. <laughs> he just hates Trump him. Trump isn't as anti-abortion as the average right wing. Okay, you know what? He's asking. I, you're I, asking people to be more reasonable than they are. Cheeto you're man You're expecting bad. too much. Got it. That's it. Like, or, or whoever Republican man, bad. It doesn't like, honestly, it could have been anybody else. It could have been uh, as well. In particular, if it was someone who wasn't a neocon establishment rhino type, he would have done the same. I think I don't, because the media would have sent their dogs after him. And then this guy who, you know, critical of gamers, gamer journalism uh, is not critical of mainstream journalism because those things are so different. So um, okay, so we need to finish this up because I got three songs to get through, and we're not doing. Well, that's it. That's the end of this video. So, should we gonna do those video, those songs then? That's what this ends on. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that's what great indoor here. So, this. if you want to have any real change, you want to make any real impact here, focus on be focus on making thoughtful, intelligent arguments, going patiently and slowly Is and that carefully. What you think you did? And not just barreling crazy, going into the being a bull in a china shop. Okay, so the, the other side needs to do this, but you can say things like, I would de demolish democracy to prevent Trump. 
Yeah. And I think people should be, or women should be able to kill their babies out of the yeah. womb. Like, yeah. that, that, none of that is nuanced. He's oh, just smarter than you, Allison. He's smarter than you because autism. So, you know. Uh, yeah, now I get it both ways because I've yeah. <laughs> now had somebody say that she's smarter than me because I, I'm autistic. And mm -hmm. that I hyper focus on something. In this case, I hyper focus on the fact that saying men are women's enemies is going to eventually deteriorate into misanthro mis misanthropy and this kind of crap. Like everything that we see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but only only people who live in a country and and in a in a country that is as free and as abundant and as safe as has ever been in all of human history could have these kinds of criticism. Yeah. Only somebody who has it that good can complain. Yeah, this it's like much. so good. Like men are responsible for this society. Lowest rate of of death infant mortality birth, infant yeah. mortality uh, maternal mortality least rate of a nutritional deficiency women can walk the streets even though they're still freaking afraid you know all of this stuff and men still hate women and men are women's enemy yeah like this is that that entire narrative is repulsive like every aspect of it is should repulse people on a fundamental level. When someone beaks off about men being women's enemies, you should just be like, you're making me vomit a little with what your mm -hmm. statement. Like we need to get to that point. It needs to be repulsive. It needs to be as repulsive as somebody going to a brunch and saying, you know, I think it's the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people will have a reaction to that. Even people who would be like, man, maybe. Even noticers would probably have a reaction to that being said bald face in public. You know? And that's where we should go. You know, that's where we should be. We should actually st extend the protections of Christian morality. You know, th those protections that came, that, that were extended to every outgroup, except men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should extend that to men. Let's think about that. That it's actually repulsive to call them the enemy of good. All right. Well, that's the end of the video, Anything really. Like... Nope. Yeah, forget it. Let's just wrap let me, it up let, after that. You can finish the video, but I got to go on to the other thing. You know. The... All right. I mean, I could play the rest of it. Um. Yeah. This guy has added nothing. Just play the rest of it. I won't be. I'll gone. play it. Just go get set up. Play this has been going for. You... Yes, let's go. Allison, ahead. this has been going for three and a half hours. Okay. Just focus on contributing in a thoughtful and proactive way. And, you know, for God's sake, I would extend to you the same advice that I've extended. To, I have extended countless times to, um, uh, countless times to so-called, uh, uh, woke activists who think that they're not being properly represented in games. If you don't, like what the game companies are making, start making your own. Well, he, sta he stamped his uh, hand on the table, so you know he's right. Very serious. Um, yeah, like, that's what people are doing. 